boom i think we doing it cool all right whoa richard vegan gains welcome and thank you for joining me on tonight's stream very much appreciate it yeah no problem so man um you know me and you've been going back and forth about vegan topics and all the things happen and online and in the world and that you know bits and pieces over the years for a while so we've um you know your content and your knowledge has helped me grow a lot it's taught me how to say things better it's taught me how to debate people better it's just given me more confidence in my arguments and um, confidence just that vegans are right and you know or and our intentions right maybe some vegans are doing some weird shit but as a general thing we are right we can live this way we can thrive this way long term there's so many benefits and ultimately it is the right thing to do so you've really helped me get to a new level in my understanding and in my confidence in it all so i want to thank you for that and yeah no problem dude I, yeah, I really appreciate it. I know a lot of people really appreciate it, as I, I'm sure you, you see every day in your comment section and things like that. And I thought it would be really useful to build a little bit on, you know, on my own knowledge um, and probably for a lot of people watching as well by asking you to answer a few questions that I have about um, how you got to where you're at now in terms of yeah, no problem. I don't understand about everything. Um, before we do that, though, I guess there's maybe some people who will watch this and don't know who you are. So maybe a bit of a background about uh, how you got interested in animal rights and, you know, how you felt about animals growing up. And, um, yeah, just what, you, what you've done over the years for this movement and are doing today. Yeah, sure. So, um... I guess if we're going way back, like into my childhood, um, and the journey towards me being vegan, um, I always really loved animals. Um, you know, when I was a kid, I always really loved going to the zoos and everything and reading about animals. You know, at the time, I didn't know zoos were bullshit, but um, yeah, I was always a big animal lover. Um, I always hated people deep down. I don't know why, but. Wait, um, stop, bro. Like I, I don't know why young. I just is it because you were smart when yeah, you were young even, and people seem stupid comparatively uh, people get in my way more like animals they never bothered me um, but yeah people always just got in my way I just couldn't stand people I don't know I'm kind of antisocial mm -hmm. but um, yeah uh, I didn't really learn about what veganism was until I was around probably 15 16 I'd, I'd heard of vegetarianism uh i didn't hear about veganism until i was like right around you know middle of high school and um interesting thing happened to me i got uh in a coli infection in my knee after i had surgery and then i was put on um ton of painkillers i was on morphine um i had a yeah, I had a few surgeries, too, to flush out the infected fluid for my knee. So they put me under for that, and uh, the nurses gave me Percocet and Oxycontin. So I was on this, a ton of opiates, and I think I overdosed. Whoa. And I could feel myself dying, and I felt my heart, heart slowing down. Then I had this, like, weird, crazy out-of-body experience where I felt like I would... Like, I actually saw myself... Um, like leave my body I was seeing myself from the ceiling and then I kept floating up floating up floating up and then I went into space and I felt like I was connected to everything and um, I had this like weird sense of like eternity like I, I it didn't feel like I was just out for you know a few minutes I felt like I was out for like thousands of years it was really bizarre what? really yeah what a trip yeah bro. it was it was a pretty crazy trip and yeah, after that, I was a little different. Um, I just kind of... What did you of... think when you came back? Like, just instantly, like, fuck, I'm glad I'm back. I thought I died. Yeah, I thought I was dying. Um, and it was actually a nice experience. Uh, yeah. I'd never been Quiet afraid enough. of dying before. Uh -huh. Yeah, I had never been afraid of dying before. And I figured, 
like I was just dying then, but you know, a nice sensation washed over me. It was very peaceful and I felt very connected with everything. And I, I think um, that kind of opened the door towards me discovering veganism. I was just a bit more empathic than before, a little more open-minded. And um, Interesting. a friend of mine at the time, he linked a Gary Yarofsky speech on Facebook. And uh, I just took a look at the speech and then uh, everything just clicked uh, immediately after listening to the speech. And, um, you know, I didn't have an excuse to eat animal products. I, I couldn't think of one good one. It's not ethical. It's not good for your health, not good for the environment. And I just d decided to go vegan right away. And Dude, uh, you just went never looked back. Like you thought about it for the day and then we were like by the end of the day vegan? No, literally right after I saw the speech, I just decided right then and there, just be vegan. Really? Just in the moment, he was that good? Yeah. That's a bloody good speech, though. Because we never heard anything like that before, all put together in one beautiful package like that. So after an hour of it all, like, it's fair enough, you meet him, meet yeah. him or hear something, like, and get a little a little taste of veganism, one one interesting thought about it. But then when you sit for the first time ever for an hour, and you're like, hear it all, at the end, you're kind of left with no nothing to say. Except I should probably yeah, like um, beforehand, I I'd never been exposed to any vegans. I didn't know any vegans. Never even encountered like any vegan activists in the street. So yeah. I didn't understand it. Um, I understood like why some people wouldn't want to eat meat. Like you know, you're murdering an animal. And um, I had actually thought like you know after I'm like older and I'm kind of done with my athletic interests that I'd probably go vegetarian because I don't need like the extra protein and stuff. But um, yeah, after watching that speech and learning like you don't need, you know, the protein from animal products you can get enough protein from plants. Like I, I knew that was, you know, a bullcrap excuse. Um, and e even if that were the case, even if it were harder, you know, to be athletic, it, it doesn't justify murdering animals. So, you know, I never looked back since then. That's awesome, bro. And very trippy story about the morphine and all that. Did you, yeah, I guess you healed well and all that and just sort of left the morphine behind after that one. I've never had any issues with addiction. So, um, yeah, I've never, you know, I've never taken any drug where I had a uh, trouble like quitting or, mm. or anything. Mm. Cool, man. Yeah um all right so and yeah you went vegan you know how many years ago that was um it's gonna be about 14 years in april so like in one month it'll be 14 years amazing bro and how you know you went vegan and then what was that like for you then because obviously for most of us it's a completely life-changing experience where you don't look at the meat section the same you don't look at what your friends and family are eating for dinner the same everything's changed so was that quite a profound shift in that way as well for you not just like a personal thing but you know you were like hang on a second this whole world needs to do this shit <clears throat> yeah it like going vegan it's kind of like uh it's this weird experience where you just feel like you've kind of been lied to your whole life and just sure. your whole worldview sort of changes. Um, you know, eating is kind of a mundane thing that everybody does, but when you just realize the ethical impact of your food choices uh, for the first time, it's a pretty, like, weird... A lot of people, you know, liken it to a weird religious experience. So that was, like, that was you know pretty pretty intense as far as like the dietary change it it didn't you know really you know affect me much um i never really liked eating meat all that much uh like especially things like chicken it's just nasty to cut up and then you can still get those like weird pieces of fat and stuff so I uh, never really liked eating meat all that much to begin with. And I um, think like about a year or two before I even uh, went vegan, I, I started eating just a lot more fish and stuff because I, I just thought meat was so gross. And even fish is kind of slimy and weird, but at least you don't get weird, 
gross bits of chewy fat in it and stuff. So yeah. that, that was easy for me to transition into a vegan diet. I didn't have any like weird digestive problems or I was having like diarrhea or anything. Mm-hmm. Um, and yeah, you, you know, there's straight to a different diet choice. and felt good straight away, basically. Yeah. Yeah, I actually lost a, a bit of weight at first. Like my waist um, slimmed down a couple inches. Felt like I had more That's energy. Cool. Felt like I was recovering from the gym a bit better. Yeah, cool, man. And instantly, did you feel some sort of compulsion to influence the people around you? Or did that take some time? Yeah, so, like, um, I tell my friends about it. Um, I actually got my mom to go vegan right when I did. Uh, nice. I showed her the Gary Yarofsky speech, so she went vegan with me. Um, I was, like, camera shy. Uh, oh. I've always been pretty camera <laughs> that shy. That is very funny to hear from you. You're yeah. You're camera all day, so, every day, live now. <laughs> yeah. So, um, yeah, it just took a lot for me to actually want to go on camera, but... I, I just kept seeing so many, you know, videos in the fitness space about how, oh, you need to eat meat and like all these recommendations that, you know, steak is, you know, a good protein source, crap like that. And I'd argue with yeah. people about ethics in the comment section too. And then eventually I just got so fed up with it. Like I was kind of spinning my wheels, just arguing with people in the comment section. Mm-hmm. And uh, I got over my camera shyness and just started my YouTube channel. Cool, man. And that was basically the first kind of, uh, aside from just getting in the comment section, that was, you went straight to social media activism kind of thing. Yeah. Okay. Interesting. Um, and how long after you went vegan was that? Um, I think that would have been about, yeah, at least three or four years. I think so. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. You were in the comment section a while there. Um, did you feel pretty confident straight away with a lot of the arguments or were there still a lot of moments where you were like, fuck, I don't know how to answer this. I need to, I need to learn this one or pretty much. You like yeah. So pretty, pretty soon. I, I had been arguing with people in the comment section for a few years. So I'd already gotten pretty used to, um, you know, the, the typical the carnist shit. arguments. Yeah looking up research that was actually really good to learn how to actually formulate arguments and come up I with agree. evidence yeah it gives you a bit of time but, um, you know, and you can do a bit of research yeah. and when it comes up instead of being in the moment and looking like shit i don't have the answer to this other than that yeah yeah it, it's it, it would have been especially hard for me if i had never done that and uh, get into like live debate stuff um that would have definitely been very difficult because I don't have like a knowledge base and live debate is a much more different thing than just, you know, responding to a comment. You have a lot of, you know, free time to do whatever you want and uh, think about things. But um, everything's constantly a learning process. Um, I got a lot of things incorrect or wrong or, you know, maybe the full picture wasn't there yet. And especially as new research comes out, you know, you just get more and more evidence you know as time goes on to support you know your uh viewpoint and sometimes things change and uh you're like dead wrong and then you have to you know change things like um what happened with heart disease reversal um for a long time because of dr codwell esselstein i thought heart disease reversal was a thing on the vegan diet but you know that turned out to be wrong and you know because i i care about evidence even though it doesn't you know necessarily support the vegan position um, you know, I've, I've gone back on that and I don't claim a vegan diet will reverse heart disease. Yeah. Better to just be honest. There's more than enough arsenal to use to still make the strongest argument yeah. ever. Yeah. Uh, um, r- really, really bad idea to lie. Uh, yeah, you know, just to discredit everything. Claim. Exactly. Yeah. And why would, like, we just don't need to, we don't need to say it reverses heart disease, but it probably prevents you getting heart disease. Yeah. Yeah, it does. Yeah, cool. Um, cool, man. All right. So, I, and, and that's exactly the kind of thing I want to get into in a minute. But so from there, yep, you started on YouTube, you started doing your thing. And what was the kind of progress on YouTube and things like that? Uh, YouTube channel exploded right away. Um, yeah, really? 
There was like a spe specific initially, video or something? Um, actually, a shout out from Happy Healthy Vegan, which uh -huh. we can talk about them. Uh, I know Ryan uh, probably isn't vegan because it looks like he feeds his cat meat. I but saw, uh, I remember asked after me to doing ask me about that today. Yeah, yeah, we can talk about that. Mm. Um, yeah, but after I did a video on the doctors, I remember that being, you know, a big video that kind of propelled me forward. And uh, Ryan from Happy Healthy Vegan gave me a shout out. Mm -hmm. uh, that was, I, I think I would have gotten the same growth eventually, but that was a big boost. Um, yeah. But yeah, we're not, uh, we're not too close anymore. Yeah, well, <laughs> it happens. So, yeah. I mean, we can jump straight into that one, I guess. You, know, you just brought it up and, you know, the other stuff can wait a little bit. So, you would say that aside from the fact that, or the possibility, I don't know how much you know, that he, aside from the fact that he um, feeds his cat a non-vegan diet, you would say that everything else he does is vegan in terms of he eats a vegan diet, so, he doesn't wear leather, things like that. So to be clear, um, this is what happened and you can make your own judgment. Okay. Uh, Ryan from Happy Healthy Vegan, he has a few cats with his wife. I, I, I'm not sure if it's his wife or girlfriend, Angie. Um, she, so they made a video a while ago talking about uh, how they feed their cats vegan. Yeah. They took that video down. Um, it's not been on their channel for years now. And whenever you ask them, hey, what do you feed your cats? They won't answer. Um, and it gets weird. You can ask them, do you feed your cat vegan? You can even ask them whether they think it's okay to feed a cat a vegan diet. They won't answer. So um, that reeks of guilt to me. And you can ask him, go on. Ryan streams regularly. Uh, you know, they upload videos regularly. You can comment and ask them, what do you feed your cat? And you'll get that same kind of reply. They just will refuse to answer. They'll even refuse to answer whether or not it's ethical to feed your cat meat. Mm. Um, so, so as vegan activists, why would you not answer a question like that, whether it's okay to feed a, a cat meat? So mm -hmm. pretty sus. It sounds a little um, sus. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty sus. So to be fair, that's, that's what he says. He hasn't outright said that he feeds his cat meat, but pretty mm. sus. Okay. I... I, I mean, look, it's one of those things where there are still a lot of people who don't believe you can have a vegan cat, you know, and think that they care about animals, so they're feeding their cat because they don't want their cat to get sick. And meanwhile, a lot of animals are dying to feed this cat. So it's like, you know, it's not very logical, but if you did have an animal that you had to feed that was in your cat and it wasn't suitable. Maybe there is a cat that just can't eat a vegan diet, maybe. You know, I've heard of like, it's harder for the boys and um, potentially certain breeds. I don't really know actually the details, but um, you know, in that situation, I would say, well, this isn't good, but if there's no other situation and they're in my care, it is permissible, it's acceptable. I'm not gonna let this animal die. Like, but it's a bad situation. No one's saying it's good. What do you think of that? So, yeah, we can cover all those things. So first of all, um, on whether or not uh, cats can be vegan, they absolutely can. There's no particular reason for why you should assume cats can't be vegan, um, assuming they can get all the nutrition they need. Yeah. Now, can you have a cat live off of rice and mangoes? No. Mm -hmm. uh, they need a more species-specific diet, but we have technology. You know, we can... Yeah, we have technology. We can make, uh, you know, isolated proteins. We can add certain things to food, uh, like certain amino acids that they need. Um, and you can give them all the vitamins, minerals, everything they need with uh, a vegan diet. You can look up vegan diets for cats. Uh, I work with a company called Vigor, V-G-R-R-R. -R -R. Um, I believe that's how you pronounce it. I link it in all my videos too. 
Um, they sell vegan cat food. There's different brands. Uh, we feed our cats uh, Benavo vegan cat food. Yeah. So th there's there's no particular reason for why you would think a cat could not be vegan, assuming they're getting all the nutrition they need. Yeah, assuming they're getting a specially That's... formulated diet. Because as you said, just yeah. from putting t lentils and beans and plants together, it goes a long way, but it's not quite enough. They need a couple of things that is found in meat, then that's how they usually get it. Or it can be easily found in a supplement without the killing. Yeah. So obviously yeah. that makes so, sense. Like um, what we do with a B12 supplement, they do with a taurine supplement. Yeah, yeah, basically. So um, yeah, a lot of people get hooked up on this like idea of, oh, well, they didn't evolve to eat this. You can't just invoke evolution uh, to say, oh, well, they, they can't eat this way. Well, uh, again, all they need is the nutrition. Yeah. doesn't matter how they evolve. All they need is the All they need is the nutrition. Um, now, there is reason to believe that maybe certain patterns of eating and certain source of, sources of nutrition might give them health problems. And we, we do actually currently have research on this. Um, it's not the most like robust research. It's not like, you know, a decades long randomized trial. Uh, it's an owner reported survey and they do have veterinary data included. But what they found was uh, cats fed a vegan diet live about as long, um, just as long, could, could be a little longer, but just as long they found At in least. the study. Yeah. And um, they actually have better health outcomes. So they're less likely to, you know, get things like kidney disease. They're less likely to have to go to a vet. Um, they're less likely to be overweight. Uh, they're less likely to get heart disease. Things like that. Sounds so, um, healthier than there, eating the there scraps could be a off few... a slaughterhouse floor, which is what a lot of that cat food is. Yeah. And the store-bought cat food is also supplemented with taurine. Yeah, yeah. So there could be a few reasons for the finding for why vegan cats have better health outcomes overall. Um, it could be down to the food source. So like you mentioned, dead rotting meat, you know, that has been, you know, that, that is not fit for human consumption that might have like weird, gross stuff added. Like, um, if you've ever seen some of these rendering plants, uh, oftentimes what they'll do is they'll throw, uh, like plastic bags full of meat and crap, crap that either was going rotten or couldn't be used for human consumption they throw these like pieces of like these packages of meat with plastic into these rendering machines and you know this plastic and, and crap uh gets into the food could partly be due to that like contamination um another reason could be food formulations so um cats just like us they can get heart disease if they eat too much saturated fat so a lot of people don't know that. A lot of people think, oh, they're carnivores, so they can eat as much fat and mm -hmm. cholesterol as they want. That's not the case. Mm -hmm. uh, cats will develop heart disease if they eat too much saturated fat. Uh, because a lot of sources of vegan nutrition are low in saturated fat, like unless you add coconut oil or palm oil, that could have a positive protective effect you know, for cats. Um, a lot of plant foods have phytonutrients and antioxidants that are also beneficial. Cats could be benefiting off of that as well. Um, another factor is vegans probably take better care of their animals. More uh, they are more physically, yeah, they're they're more physically active, so they're probably more likely to take their cats outside on walks and stuff and make sure they're not getting overweight. Yeah. So um, sources of nutrition uh, or how the food is formulated and how these animals are being taken cared for for different groups of people could explain the differences in health outcomes. But regardless, uh, you can feed a cat a vegan diet. Well, and um, I haven't seen feed a cat a vegan diet. Yeah. Well, no, everybody um, should, but reason... especially vegans. Well, if you're vegan, you absolutely have to feed your cat a vegan diet or else you're not vegan. Um, well, that so the only, you... the only pushback I would give you is like certain, and I don't think that's the case for the guy you just mentioned, but, Vegan cat food is tough to find and in some places tough to import. I've had this experience myself. So, you know, I've had experiences where I'm like, okay, what are we supposed to do? We literally cannot get vegan cat food right now. Or, or even um, vegan dog food when we rescued some dogs in Bali and we we're like, actually, I don't know. Uh, we, we, 
what did we do in that situation? I think we fed the dogs some like pretty delicious vegan meals and stuff actually, but you get the you get the picture, you know. It's it's one thing to be able to switch a diet very easily, but unfortunately, um, and this is where I might not say something so specific, although I understand where you're coming from, but so specific as this guy isn't vegan because of this, um, because I don't I don't know his situation fully. But yeah, like it does make sense. You know, if you have access to vegan cat food and you could buy vegan cat food and you're not buying vegan cat food, why not? Why wouldn't you? you it doesn't make any sense. Yeah. Um, it must just be, or I would assume it, the only reason that would make sense for someone who's actually vegan and cares about animals is that because they're not convinced that it's healthy for their cat. So, you know, in that situation. Yeah. Um, and we can talk about um, weird scenarios that you might be in. Um, I knew a guy in Syria who, uh, because of like different import bans and stuff, like absolutely could not get vegan cat food, and uh, he wanted to rescue a few cats. We can talk about some situations like that. Um, outside of like really marginal cases like that, if you live in a country where you literally cannot import anything because of uh, you know trade embargoes and stuff. Uh, you know, there's always online shopping. Chances are, if you live in a modern, developed country, uh, you can order things online. Uh, you can find something. Mm. Uh, might not be Benevo, but you might be able to get Evolution cat food. Um, y you might be able, you might be, be able to find something. Um, yeah. So, especially if you live in the U.S., Canada, U.K., Europe, <clears throat> you're gonna you're probably gonna be able to find something. Yeah. Um, secondly. If you're having trouble uh, being able to import cat food, what you can do is you can order something called, uh, I think it's called Veggie Cat. It, it's uh, basically a supplement that has amino acids added, uh, you know, uh, essential amino acids, vitamins, minerals, and you can add it to a homemade cat food if you really have to. Uh, I'd say it's always better to get pre-made food. But um, that is an option, so it's just, you know, a little tub container. Might be easier in some cases to order that, make your own food. But oh. um, I didn't know that was an option, in, bro. And I was going to say, someone needs to create this thing where you can just put a few drops of the necessary stuff onto their, like my cat's like eating pumpkin, for example. Put it on there and boom, like that would be amazing if you could do that. A lot, a lot easier to ship and... Um, a lot more convenient. Yeah. I, I didn't know that was a possibility. That's cool. In cases where you cannot get uh, vegan food, so like this guy yeah. that I uh, that was talking to me from Syria, uh, he wanted to rescue these cats that were out on the street, and um, I just told him, "Don't." Um, I I know it's a sad thing to see animals, you know, starving and having fleas and worms and all these things, but they're predatory animals. Uh, you know, they they need to kill to survive. It, it doesn't make any sense to give them sympathy, but all these other animals, cows, chickens, pigs, where's the sympathy for them, uh, yeah. right? Like, yeah. and I think this is something that, um, it, it's just part of human psychology. If you don't see it in front of you, it's a lot easier to make a decision like this. And this is what happens to meat eaters. We know if you ask a meat eater, would you kill these animals yourselves? Would you go hunting? Like you can go up to somebody eating McDonald's and ask them what they think of hunters. Oh, they're scumbags. Hunting is just yeah. for, you know, barbaric morons. Okay, well, what are you eating? Same answer. Exactly. Yeah. 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 So um, vegans will you know be subject to these same like weird human psychological quirks where you'll see a cat starving in the street feel sympathy for them and then you might get this idea that okay well you know it, it's just you know pet food uh you're not the one killing the animal mm -hmm. um and oh look it's starving right in front of me well again you have to give sympathy to the animals that are being killed not just yeah. the cat yeah I think about um, the bigger picture as would you would round be. up yeah would you round up all the other cats and kill those cats to feed to one cat it it, it doesn't yeah, make any sense shit. so yeah if, you if you're in a situation dogs, Syria bro because you can feed them a vegan diet much more easily you can cook that yourself 
Um, I yeah, think um, there is. Y yeah, so you would want to um, probably give them a supplement. Uh, there is a veggie dog. Yeah. Um, that's a supplement that you might be able to get a hold of. But yeah, do not get a carnivorous animal if you are vegan and you do not have access to you know this vegan food. Research ahead of time. Um, if you're in a situation where, say, I don't know, you live in Syria or something where you can't get vegan cat food um, and you've already had a cat, uh, the the ethical thing to do would be to put the cat down, go to a vet, get it, uh, get it euthanized. Again, why are you giving sympathy to this one animal when all these other animals have to die to be able to take care of these cats? Um, Theoretically, idea, it, it, I just think like, how could I do that, you know? And I don't know. I would probably, I just kind of, I know that's probably logical, but practically, that just doesn't even feel like a real solution, you know? So I don't know. What I, like, I know a lot of people. I, I know a lot of people would not be able to do that psychologically, but you have to ask yourself, would you be able to kill all the cows, chickens, pigs that are in your cat's yeah. or dog's food? Yeah. W would you be able to slaughter, like, you know, how many cows would have to die over an animal's lifetime? Like maybe mm. like at nah. least five or well, 10. I, I guess I would think about it more like, okay, maybe I can't do this now, but in the future I might be able to make this happen. And in the meantime, I'll do my best. And, you know, maybe there's certain ways I can do it that's um, less contributing to the things I'm against than not. And I don't know, I would just, cause like that would be a massive, massive, fucking call like when a lot of this food as as you were talking about is a lot of the cat food and things like that is probably just the fell off fell onto the floor of the slaughterhouse kind of food that um isn't maybe necessarily necessarily contributing as much as a t-bone steak and chicken legs and this and that i don't exactly know how it works but um i guess i would have these things in mind before you know, like it would be a, it would be a big thing to weigh up, and it would be a big problem. And that's why I'm glad you're talking about it, dude. Like vegans who can get vegan cat food, 100% should be getting vegan cat food and promoting it to everybody else. We got the science on our side that shows it's at least as healthy and looks like promotes very many health benefits um, for the cats. And that really should be the end of the story. Like should be the logical choice for, which is the m most amount of people. You know, most people don't live somewhere like Syria, where they can't get vegan cat food most people watching this will be in the usa they'll be in australia they'll be in canada and they'll be able to get vegan cat food sent to them after a few internet clicks yeah um again when so you mentioned um well maybe you'd be able to do it in the future and for right now you have to feed them meat uh it is true so you know uh, say a pound of cat food is probably contributing to fewer animal deaths than a pound of, you know, steak or, you know, a pound of chicken. Um, that is true, but um, it, again, you are contributing to it. Uh, you are directly paying, you know, for their rights to be violated. It might not be, you know, eating like a, rot a rotisserie chicken where, you know, at least one, you know, animal yeah. had to die. Yeah. might be like one tenth or maybe even like one fiftieth of an animal had to die for uh, a bag of cat or dog food. But uh, like, again, I, I'd run pay for if you don't have to, I'd, I'd run name the trait. So mm. name the trait that's lacking in animals that have lacking in human beings. You would be fine with paying for human beings to be killed, to feed to your cat or dog. First, I just want to say how funny it is that you're running name the trait on me after I've seen you run yeah. name the trait so many times to so many people, yeah. and I love it. Um, no, nah, man, I agree with you. Like, it's there is no trait that would make it different. Um, in the in the big pit, like it wouldn't be a trait thing. It would, I guess, it would just be more like a circumstance thing. There's a lot to weigh up in this equation. This animal is in my care. This is probably the kind of meat they eat, which is probably not so much directly or as directly um, contributing to the problem as it is. Maybe I have no other option now, but maybe next month I will or the month after, you know, at what point? Like this would be a threshold deontology thing, right? Let's say well, it was in a month. Well, no, 
No, the, the, the situations are equated. So um, let's say there was cat and dog food made out of human beings. And let's say, um, you know, that human cat or dog food uh, that has human beings in it. Uh, let's say buying that, you know, like five or 10 pound bag of ground up human flesh that only contributed to, let's say, one fiftieth of an actual human life, whereas buying, uh, I don't know, a human steak contributed to one tenth of a human life. Um, would you be okay with, you know, buying that cat or dog food made out of human beings? Um, I definitely wouldn't think it was an okay or moral thing to do. But if I'm also in the equation weighing up, but then I have to murder my cat here. You know as an example like that adds into it so would then the answer definitely be well no i'm not going to commit this act because i'll have to commit this act no but maybe and um you know it's an equation that i don't i'd have to probably like think about a lot and i don't want to ever be in that situation and and as i like the bottom line is bro like to keep it practical most people aren't um and i think like the core of the message here is vegans and everybody but especially vegans who are trying to do the ethical thing by animals should be feeding their cats vegan food because it is healthy despite what a lot of them might believe do your own research check out the studies the studies are showing the same thing um you know there's meta-analysis on this uh so yeah i think like you're obviously convinced i'm convinced there's a lot of vegans that are convinced i got a mate who's had vegan who's had cats on vegan food since before I was vegan so over 10 years perfectly healthy perfect perfectly happy and that's an important thing for us to do you know it's just an extension of our veganism to also where with our companion animals give them um, what they need in the most vegan way possible I I think what really needs to be brought across here is regardless of the circumstances, it's wrong to feed your cat or dog meat. Um, now, you might have um, certain values where you value the life of your animal over the lives of other animals or even other people. Yep. Um, depending on the person, hey, I'd, I'd kill a, another human being like Isaac Butterfield or something, some like, you know, dipshit carnist. <laughs> Uh, to feed to my cat or dog if I if I needed, but um, when you're talking about you know being a vegan and you care about the rights of other animals, you're being a hypocrite. It, for whatever whatever the circumstances yeah, may be, I would be, agree with that. No, I would you, agree with that. It would be whatever the yes. circumstances whatever the circumstances may be. If you are if you consider yourself vegan, doesn't matter if oh this cat is starving to death and it's right in front of me and i could help it doesn't matter where you live and you can't get vegan cat food doesn't matter whatever the circumstances are it is wrong to feed your cat or dog regardless of the circumstances um other murdered animals you're you're contributing to animal murder so you can use whatever cope like, oh, I'll I'll move someday and I'll be able to feed a vegan diet or, yeah. um, you know, the vegan cat food, uh, it'll get here in like two months or something. Um, it, it doesn't matter what the excuse is. It's wrong. Uh -huh. And I, I don't want to give people some out where, oh, you know, it, it's OK. Just hand wave it away for now. Mm. Um, it's wrong. And you're a mm. hypocrite and you can't call yourself vegan if you're feeding your cat or dog meat. Cool, man. I hear where you're coming from. And I think most people would just probably have to bite the bullets that they are hypocrites, but they would still be doing what they felt was right um, if they were in a situation well, like sure. that. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, I, it's, it's I, like, again, unusual, it's a pretty unusual there, situation. There can be conflicting values, right? Um, you might value the life of your cat. Um, over the li lives of other animals, uh, even exactly. though you do value the lives of those animals. Yeah. But um, you have to yeah, recognize what you're doing is wrong. Yeah, it's um, more, you're right. Like, I understand what you're saying. It would be hypocritical. The right thing to do, you know, if you weigh it all up is probably this. But you also are a human being who has certain values. And generally, the most valuable things are those beings close to us in our care. So you might make a different decision even if you disagree with your own decision in a way. Yeah, just don't do this, you know, cope excuse and um, use like mental gymnastics to, 
you know, create some sort of framework where in your mind you're doing something that's ultimately right. You're not. Yeah. You just have conflicting values and you're doing something that's wrong in order to support some other value. But I, I don't want to give people some like cope excuse that, oh, well, you're in a circumstance where you have no other choice. Well, y you always have a choice uh, and there's a better choice uh, in most circumstances. You usually you're not usually left with two options that are equally as bad. The option yeah. where we'll, multiple we'll, we'll, animals are dying to save one animal is worse than just letting the one animal die. Yeah, I think that though, like, let's say we are talking, it was a 50th of an animal, or even if it was, let's say it was a cow and we're talking about a month of feeding a cat, as an example. You can't get vegan cat food for a month, but this cat you rescued, you know, and we're talking about, well, in that month, they might eat a 50th, 50th of a cow. So then you've got a 50th of a cow versus killing a cat. And then that equation seems, although like, I mean, yeah, it, that's why I feel like it does become threshold deontology. Tell me if I'm wrong, but because you're weighing up a bunch of things. That there is a rights violation there, but there is. Deontology. Okay, because the that way I see That wouldn't be threshold it, deontology. I, I think that would fit more with uh, utilitarianism. Um, well, let me tell you how I'm getting being... there. Let me tell you how I'm getting there. Because, yeah. like, if you are, you know, you make your decisions based on utility and rights violations, um, and then here you're seeing, like, yes, there is a rights violation there. That has a large amount of weight. But overall, the death factor is, is quite a lot less. And so you could probably scale it that way, or at least some people might. So um, y that could fit within a threshold deontological view. Um, I, I would just say you'd have to have a very low threshold, um, an okay. unusually low threshold. Okay, fair but enough. But that sounds yeah, that more like it fits with a utilitarian position because, like, like let, me, let me give you this example. Um, you're human. You're dying of kidney disease. You have two kidneys that are crapping out on you. You wouldn't even need to kill a person to get another kidney. Uh, mm. Would it be ethical for you to steal somebody's kidney and then, um, you know, take their kidney and then you'll be able to live like at least another 20 years. You, you can function with one kidney just fine. Uh, it doesn't actually negatively impact your health. It doesn't reduce your lifespan or, or anything at all. So would it be ethical to steal somebody's kidney um, to, you know, save a human life? It, so you're, you're in a situation where it would not negatively impact the other person, at least long term, I'm sure after surgery might have an owie but won't impact them really long term they'll have the same exact mm -hmm. life and you'll save another life would that be ethical to steal somebody's kidney I, I think most people would say no and that other person should just die if the only other option is to steal the kidney um because you 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 know you value human it's rights you have invasive. a right to bodily it's autonomy. Too yeah it's invading a now, pretty serious right there. now you you could have a very low threshold. Um, you might be a deontologist, but have a very low threshold where even one single human life is, uh, you know, worth violating another human right, uh, human's rights. It'd be really weird to call yourself a threshold deontologist, but I guess you could have that threshold. But that's more of a utilitarian position where a utilitarian who's just maximizing utility would say, okay, well, this isn't going to negatively impact the other person like at all, and it would save a human life. So if you're going to have this um, sort of, if you're going to have this sort of view, um, you would have to have a, a utilitarian position, in my view, where, okay, one fiftieth of an animal is dying for, you know, this, you know, bag of cat food. So, you know, one fiftieth of an animal versus one whole animal, then it's okay to buy the one bag of cat food. But I, I would liken that to, you know, stealing somebody's kidneys. Um, it may not, it, like, like I would argue, stealing somebody's kidney actually does less harm than, you know, the one fiftieth of uh, a life. Um, because you're not, like that person, their survivability is just as good as somebody with two kidneys. So um, if you value animal rights, and again, veganism is a very specific thing. It's not a welfare position. Um, you're basically granting animals the same rights of a, as a human being. That, that's what I would define veganism as. Um, I would not be in favor of me to save one human life. I would not be in favor of killing one fiftieth of a human being to save a human life. I wouldn't be in favor of, you know, 
killing one fiftieth of an animal to save a cat's life. But you, as you said though, we have, you know, human beings have certain values. So although you would see it as unethical, it also still might be something that you would do. Like you might, you know, you mentioned Butterfield to save your cats. Maybe that's serious or joking. I don't know, but there are situations where you might just be like, well, yeah, this probably, I probably shouldn't do this, but this is life. Like sometimes it's complicated and uh, yeah, that's what you decide to do. Well, here's the thing. I'm a moral anti-realist. Uh, I don't think there's such a thing as objective morality. So anybody can have a um, ethical position. So long as it's non-contradictory, it, it's mm. just as valid as any other you know, belief. So um, like y you can have conflicting values where y just because it's a family member, you value it more than like I I'd kill a school bus filled with children to save Jasmine's life. My wife, mm -hmm. like that's just the way it is. Um, yeah. y you know, you, so you may value this animal's life more than other animals. But again, um, I, I don't want to give anybody this cope excuse saying, oh, well, under certain circumstances, it's permissible. It's not. You're doing something wrong. And if you value uh, animal rights, you are being a hypocrite if you give your cat or dog meat. But then, yeah, I hear you up until that point because I think every, I agree with everything you're saying except for, because then it also still comes into play Okay, so it's either them or them. I'm gonna have to murder my animal kind of thing, you know, my companion, whoever it is. Um, and then there's me violating their rights, me causing a death there. And the equation just, I don't know if, it, I, don't know if I agree it goes to where you're saying it goes. Maybe it does, like I'd have to probably give it more thought. But um, look, like I feel like we're in a pretty fringe part of the topic that probably we don't need to elaborate. I think it on. matters though. I don't I, think it I think doesn't it matter. Matters. I think it matters. Like I'm not saying I, I'm not saying at all that it doesn't. I think all of this stuff kind of matters. Um, all of this stuff definitely matters. But um, I, I know, think the, most moral issues deal on the fringe. Um, so uh, a lot of these moral issues kind of hinge on these, you know, weird fringe because it, it really tests what your values are. Um, most moral moral decisions are are going to be on the fringes. Um, mm. So, l and like, can we can just, just run name the trait real quick. We can run name the trait real quick cool. and see. And, and there's no right or wrong answer. Uh, I mean, I'm a moral anti-realist. I wouldn't say somebody's wrong, uh, like objectively speaking. I might disagree, but you're not wrong. So, if we were in a similar situation, say. Um, Let's say this wasn't a um, a companion animal. It was another family member. Say your wife or your husband yep. or sister, brother. Let's say they needed, for whatever reason, to eat human flesh in order to survive. Mm -hmm. And um, just to keep everything, you know, equal. Um, let, let's say you had to kill a vegan to, uh, you know, feed them human flesh. They can't eat carnivorous flesh. They okay. have to eat vegan flesh. So you're, so for, I don't know, let's say a few months, your spouse had to eat vegan human flesh in order to survive. Would you be okay with killing, say, 1 50th of a human being in order to, um, you know, save somebody's life? Yeah. So is, there's a, a vegan meat I industry gotcha. I gotcha. that you're supporting. <laughs> yeah. You get uh -huh. what I'm saying? Yeah. I don't think that it is necessarily right. But would I do it? Probably, maybe, yeah. Like I would have to be in that situation. It's, it's completely unique to anything I've ever experienced. But would I? Yeah, I'd be begrudgingly probably do what I got to do to save my my wife. Potentially, I don't know. Maybe I'd let her die. Like I just can't imagine myself doing that. Um, but I also can't imagine myself killing someone for this reason. So, you know, it's really it's really hard to say, bro. Like, but I agree with you that the right thing to do would be. You know, morally, the right thing to do would be to not murder because that would be fucked and we yeah. should just accept our fate. I do agree with that. Would I just let that happen? Well, fuck, I don't know. <laughs> like, that's, I would hope yeah, that I and would do you have, more things. You have conflicting values where your wife, y your wife matters more to you than any random person. Totally. And uh, your cat or dog might matter more to you than any random animal. But yeah. again, um, y you have to recognize right. that there is a moral trade-off here.
Yep, I gotcha. I agree with you. Um, and look, all I was trying to say, I wasn't trying to say it doesn't matter because I, I think it does, and um, that's why I wanted to talk with you, like to get into whatever area it goes. Uh, I guess just the point I was trying to make is the practical takeaway here, I hope for people, is that feed your cat vegan meat, feed your dog vegan meat, you know, they can be perfectly happy and healthy. And I know there's a lot of people out there that could do that right now that aren't, that should. So, you know, yeah. that's about that's about all I, like, that is important too. And and so is, you know, what you were saying, like trying to get to the hypotheticals of what if this would and that. Oh yeah, that we do. and uh, I want to I wanna call out um, at least one scumbag that I know, uh, Simnet Nutrition. Uh-huh. He's a... Uh, People call him a vegan. Uh, he's not. He feeds his cats meat. He is well within his capabilities. He lives in, um, Van- I think, either BC or Vancouver. Mm-hmm. I don't know if he's in Vancouver, but he lives in British Columbia. He has access to vegan cat food. He refuses to feed his cats vegan cat food. He's been told that you can feed your cats vegan cat food. Um, I think both Hench Herbivore and myself have told him this. Mm. His own fans have told him this. Yet, he still went out of his way to adopt more cats and feed them meat. The guy's not vegan. He's a fucking scumbag. He's a fake ass. You can call him plant-based or whatever, and you can like him as a person. Uh, But that jackass is not vegan. And uh, it it really annoys me seeing people like Brian Turner doing collabs with this jackass, calling him vegan, when he's not. He's not one of us. He's not vegan. He's not in favor of animal rights. He goes out of his way to murder animals to feed to his cats. And the only reason I can think of is he's afraid of getting criticized for feeding oh, his cats a vegan interesting. diet. That's yeah, that's, that's the only reason I can assume. There's I mean, been plenty of people who've gone out to him and told him. Yeah, I, th- there are there are assholes who will refuse to feed their cats a vegan diet because they're worried somebody's going to call them an animal abuser or something for feeding their cats vegan. Yeah, I I think that's probably true, and I didn't even it didn't even cross my mind that that would be a reason for people not to do it. Um, I like to think I like to give him and anyone the benefit of the doubt and just hope that it's because they're not convinced it's healthy or something. But um, if they know it's healthy and they're doing something like that, yeah, that's really shit. And that's, yeah. That yeah. Would, I mean, that's definitely not a vegan thing to do. Um, and it's hard, man. Like, yeah. I don't know. You, we are very focused on the ethics of this. And, you know, we try to live by what we preach in every way we learn how to do. And then I think guys like, um, what's his fucking name? Simnet? Yeah, Simnet Nutrition. Simnet Nutrition, yeah, yeah, I forget his real name. But, um, you know, I know he's a lot more focused on nutrition and things like that and maybe watched Earthlings once, went vegan and eats the diet, but maybe there's a few blind spots for him that, you know, he just hasn't considered much. But it sounds like he's had this brought to his attention, hasn't wanted to change for whatever reason, and that is, yeah, that is something that's wrong like oh i i'm convinced this guy's a selfish scumbag so he had cats before going vegan that he Mm. was feeding meat understandable when he went vegan kept feeding the cats meat again if you're not deep into things like we are okay i i can understand that Mm. he went out and got more cats why would you do that if you were vegan if knowing like with this mindset yeah, that i'm gonna feed the cats yeah, meat you still, the guy you still is know not that vegan. yeah even if you don't think there's another way you still know that this isn't a good thing i'm doing feeding cats other animals that were slaughtered it, if i would Just buy a snake right uh-huh. like if i had this mindset that i have an animal that i cannot feed a vegan diet i would not get that animal i wouldn't get a snake for the same yeah. reason you know yeah. i mean yeah sometimes animals literally fall in your lap you know like you might be fucking driving they did not fall in his lap he went out okay, to yeah. uh, i'm not i'm you. just playing devil's yeah. advocate brian trying to stand up for the dude specifically i had no idea his situation but bottom line is vegans vegan cat food yeah cool i appreciate it dude all right well you anything else you want to say on that um I, I, I would say that is probably the biggest weird civil war going on right now in the mm. uh, vegan community. Yeah. If you go on uh, like a I vegan disagree. subreddit and you bring up, 
it, there's a bigger one. Well, go ahead. There's some it's a, it's there's one. some others, but as far as whether or not you're like an actual vegan, um, that is the biggest civil war going on right now in the vegan community. Mm -hmm. Whether or not you can feed uh, cats and dogs, but more so cats, a vegan diet. Go on any vegan subreddit and bring up that topic. You, you will see so many fake ass vegans coping and saying, oh, it's their natural diet. Why would I push my moral views on them? Blah, blah, blah. Like the same stupid cope excuses you mm. hear meat mm. eaters making. So I, I like we've been going on about this for a while, but it's a big fucking deal. There's so many fucking yeah, fake man. vegans it is. going yeah. on and on about how you need to feed your cats meat. Yeah, They're it's a problem. fake asses, and I want to see like people actually live the lifestyle, you know? It would help a lot. Like, if every single vegan who has companion animals right now, dogs and cats, that are feeding their animals animals, if they all change, that would be a significant shift for sure. And it would make it easier for those people and places who are struggling to get this food more. Um, you know, because I know there are people in places that do have more problems than others. So do it, people. Do it. Like, there's, don't be afraid of the health side. Do a little bit of research and you'll realize that it is perfectly healthy. And there's been studies on this. There's many um, anecdotes and examples of people who, as I said already, one, who have been feeding their companion animals vegan diets for a decade and more. And, um, you know, the oldest dog on record up to, I think a few years ago, but Guinness World Record holding dog of longest life ever, vegan diet from birth. Um, I don't know if a cat has a similar story, but yeah, it can be done. It is something vegans should do, just like you should stop consuming dairy, just like you should stop buying eggs, just like you should stop feeding your companion animals other animals. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Um, for sure. Cool, man. Well, what I'd love to talk to you about next then is... Um, the health side of things for veganism like it's you know you talked a little bit about the studies with the cats and that but i want to know so that other people can understand where your confidence comes from aside from just being living proof like how much you weigh bro uh right now i'm about 270 two fucking 70 that's fucking heavy bro and you are benching like i think you said i think i've seen you say that you'd be benching about 400 or so pounds now I, I should be able to bench 405 right now. I'm not going to mm. actually attempt the lift for another couple months. Yeah. But uh, my last heavy lift was 350 pounds for three sets of five. And I also did 315 for nine reps. I almost got 10. I just couldn't quite squeeze out that last rep. But that would put me right in the 405 range. That's big time, bro. And as far as I know, you are 100% natty. Yep. So this is purely um, plant-based diet, plant-based diet. And yeah, I haven't training. taken any like anabolic steroids. <clears throat> I have taken a TB500 before, which is a healing peptide. I took it yep. for about uh, three weeks because mm -hmm. um, I had a shoulder injury and I just wanted it wasn't healing quickly enough on its own. So I've taken um, a, a drug that's technically banned by WADA. So I just want to be transparent about that, but I haven't taken any anabolic steroids. Yeah, I mean, peptides, I don't think most people would consider if you were using healing pep yeah. peptides to not be natural. It's not natural, but it's it, not. When we're talking it, about every or not, like, it ain't yeah. in the topic. <laughs> yeah, it's, it, it's not even really in a gray area. It's technically banned <laughs> by WADA, but um, practically every professional athlete Oh, has you're talking it. about, that's the one you're talking about that's banned. It wasn't another drug. Yeah, the TB500. Oh, okay. So yeah, that's it. It's just that one um, thing. I thought you were talking about two different things. There. Most most lifters have probably taken something that's been banned by WADA. Uh, there's a mm. lot of like weird uh, pre-workout supplements that have like a stimulant in it that's WADA banned. So it, it's not... When you're talking about the natty or not thing, you know, something like TB500 wouldn't really be on yeah. anybody's radar. Cool, man. So you are one of the strongest vegans ever. That is epic. And you've been vegan 14 years and you're just getting stronger. You know, you put, you got to this yeah. size as a vegan. Um, you know, yeah. you, you didn't like, you didn't stop eating meat last week after training for 10 years. So, but yeah. look, that's like one thing, but yeah, I want to go on. I want to go to what, cause you are a guy who pays attention to the studies. You know, what, what I do is like, I pay a little bit of attention and read some abstracts here and there, but I, 
give my faith to guys like you and the doctors and things like that to read this thing that's a lot of the time seems like another language to me, make sense of it. And, um, you know, there's no point in me trying to learn how to do those things necessarily. Um, you guys do a great job of that, of breaking it down, explaining how, it, how things are, what, how things are the way they are and how they got to their conclusions and things like that. So I thought maybe it would be a cool idea if you gave some of your most solid, what you find the most convincing evidence that a vegan diet is not like, I want to go further than just say adequately healthy, but one of the healthiest diets you could ever consume. Would you, would you agree with that statement? Yes. Um, I, I think there's certain dietary patterns that are healthy. So like y you can eat anything on a vegan diet, you could eat nothing but Oreos and that sort of diet is uh, terrible for you. Uh, so there's certain dietary patterns that are very health helpful that tend to fall in line with a vegan diet. So yeah. a diet that's low in saturated fat, um, ideally less than 10% of daily calories coming from saturated fat, but lower is better, uh, free of cholesterol. So the less cholesterol you consume, the better. Um, that would fall in line with a vegan diet. Uh, high in fiber, again, vegans eat the most fiber on average. Um, that is uh, calorically balanced. And again, tends to be easier to eat a diet that isn't um, uh, too calorically abundant on a vegan diet just because you're consuming more whole plant foods, fruits and vegetables, things like that that are harder to overeat. Mm -hmm. um, so that sort of dietary pattern tends to be healthier and that tends to fall more in line with a vegan diet. So vegans on average, they tend to be at a healthy BMI range. They don't tend to be overweight. Um, they also tend to eat less saturated fat, zero cholesterol. You can't eat cholesterol in a vegan diet uh, and uh, eating a lot more fiber. So you're probably going to consume more fiber if you eat only plants because plants are the only food that contain fiber. So that yeah. sort of dietary pattern um, seems to be ideal. And um, there are obviously omnivorous diets you could eat that are healthier than some vegan diets. So if you're an omnivore and you're eating, you know, like cuts of meat that are low in saturated fat, lower in cholesterol, uh, you're eating like plenty of fruits and vegetables. That's a better dietary pattern than if you're a junk food vegan and you're mostly eating Oreos. Okay, but what about the best carnivore diet compared to the best vegan diet would you say it might not make much difference not carnivore diet you know what i'm talking about a diet yeah. including animal products it might not make much difference but because we are trying to limit cholesterol limit saturated fat even a little bit yeah the dose the dose makes the poison but even a little bit is still something that you ideally wouldn't have at all and um so therefore like the best including animal products diet versus the most ideal adequate vegan diet in my opinion would it would still be the number one diet just purely when we're talking about health outcomes would you say that's true yeah that's uh like again it's kind of hard to answer a question like that because the dose makes the poison so if you only eat like one piece of chicken a month you're probably not going to see any difference between mm. somebody eating like zero all, all else almost. equal yeah all else equal yeah. you'd probably see zero difference okay um if you're talking about like normal but it's dietary a patterns, would you say it's a well would you say it's a contender for just being best that we could possibly like in, in maybe in the future we'll have better technology we could do better things but in terms of all the standard diets out there people try this people try that they eat like this they eat that you would say it is not just healthy enough you'll survive but a contender to be the you know, produce the best health health outcomes is really what we're talking about here. You're likely to live longer. You're likely to reduce your chances of the most diseases. And therefore, this would be the most ideal diet for people to consume. Yeah, you're probably best off eating a 100% plant-based diet. Again, because yeah. you're completely avoiding cholesterol. You're going to be consuming more fiber. Um, you're going to be eating, in all likelihood, less saturated fat. Um, yep. You're going to be getting more beneficial antioxidants, phytonutrients, uh, things like that. So mm -hmm. if you're comparing a healthy omnivorous diet where you're eating meat frequently, so like every day or every other day uh, versus a completely plant based diet, then, yeah, you'd probably uh, edge out the, uh, you know, the healthy omnivorous diet. 
Yeah, cool. And all right, so now let's talk about why you believe that. You know, what has been the most convincing studies for you that you feel do the best job of just saying, guys, look at this. This is conclusive. Or, or this is conclusive plus this, plus this. Like, how do you really prove this? What's What do you think is the best evidence out there we've got? So probably a large perspective cohorts are the best what that is, evidence. Please? Yeah, so basically you're just taking uh, populations of people that have different risk exposures and you're seeing uh, populations who has of people the best health that have outcomes. So you're taking populations of vegans, populations of vegetarians, low meat eaters, meat eaters, following them over time and seeing, you know, who has the highest risk of disease, who has the highest risk of mortality, things like that. Mm -hmm. um, the two biggest prospective cohorts would be the Adventist Health Study and the Oxford Vegetarian Cohort. Um, what the, those studies both found is that vegans had the lowest burden of disease and the highest life expectancy. So that right there, probably best evidence. Um, there's also other studies like the Harvard Nurses Health Study. Um, those are ongoing prospective cohorts. What they they basically find the same thing. People who are eating more meat, especially red meat, uh, they're more likely to suffer from cro chronic diseases, heart disease, diabetes, cancer. In fact, um, they they just recently released a, a paper, Harvard, where um, people who ate red meat had a massively increased risk of type two diabetes. I think for uh, people who were eating two servings of red meat had like uh, per week had a like 66% increased risk of type two diabetes, something like that. Wow. Um, so, so um, yeah, these large prospective cohorts looking at the association of meat intake and chronic disease risk, uh, those are probably the best pieces of evidence. Um, a, a lot of people criticize prospective cohorts because they rely on self-reported nutrition data, you know, yep. things like that. Oh, well, how they're really bad arguments. For one thing, um, there's about a 99, or sorry, there's about a 90% concordance with randomized trials and prospective cohorts. So if you have a finding in a prospective cohort, in all likelihood, you'd have that same finding in a randomized trial. Uh -huh. So modern, modern prospective cohorts, they, um, they're able to isolate confounding variables very well they're conducted very well the way they do these dietary surveys are very good and, and they're accurate so you know these large-scale prospective cohorts are probably the best evidence available cool and we have you've mentioned multiple of them yeah yeah the adventist health study the oxford vegetarian cohort and harvard nurses health study those are probably the three best yeah they're the three i hear you guys um talking about the most do you feel like that is enough? You know, what they've done there is like, we're good now. We don't need to really study this anymore. This is conclusive. Do you feel like it's at that level? Or it's like, this points to a pretty clear conclusion, but it would be great if we could do it this way or maybe have a study like this. Or do you feel it's adequate it's, what we've got? It's, uh, I would say it's enough to say with a high degree of certainty that vegan diets are ideal. Um, Yep. There's it, more data is always better. Um, mm -hmm. There's some interesting things that have happened uh, from some of this research. Uh, I, the latest study from Harvard linking red meat and type 2 diabetes, they actually found a stronger association with fish intake and diabetes. Things like that should be explored, and it's always good to have more data. But mm. um, right now, yeah, we have enough evidence available to conclusively say clearly meat isn't good for you. Yeah, yeah, and clearly being vegan is good for you. A plant-based diet is yeah. good for you. Okay, cool. Yeah. And, and and you say that those three would would be enough, you know, like that covers pretty much all the yeah, bases. They're that we're very about very when large it comes to health outcomes. Yeah, they're very, very large cohorts. You're talking about tens of thousands of participants and they're, there's decades worth of follow-up, so yeah. Okay, epic, bro. Um, is there something that you would like to see studied? You know, some specific thing? It doesn't have to be uh, specifically, you know, like maybe you'd be interested to see the carnivore crowd have a long-term study because probably it would be yeah, in our favor. It, it would be interesting. Like, this is ridiculous. Is that, do you have it, some it would be like interesting to see. 
Yeah, I, I, it would be interesting to see a large perspective cohort on uh, carnivore diets versus vegan diets. I think we know what the hell the outcome would be there. Um, you know, the carnivore dieters would absolutely fail miserably, uh, especially compared to vegans. But um, I, I would suspect even compared to a standard American diet, they'd probably yeah. have higher rates of heart disease, diabetes, early mortality. That would be interesting. Um, I, I would also like to see... Um, if it's possible to reverse uh, atherosclerotic cardiovascular disease. Um, mm. So some sort of large trial, either with uh, drug treatments or dietary treatments, see if that's possible. Um, there have been a few studies that have noticed regression of the disease, but not to a clinically significant extent. So that would, something like that would be interesting. Mm. Okay, so... Um, yeah, so you're pretty satisfied then. You're pretty satisfied with what we've got, really. Like, it's already kind of... The work has already kind of done enough for us to be very convinced that we are doing basically the best thing we could in terms of fueling our body. Yeah, yeah, that's pretty much. Cool. That's awesome. And, um, okay, so... I had a question, dude. I'm just trying to remember it. Oh, yeah, I had two questions. So you mentioned about Esselstyn, his work, and how he was making the claim, which made me and many other people make the claim that a vegan diet can reverse heart disease, right? And yeah, and what you're saying is it would be great to see a study like that. So you obviously disagree. I don't think they have conceded that they were wrong about that as far as I know. Has that happened? No, uh, Dr. Ravi, <clears throat> he was going to have a debate with uh, Esselstein, but he backed out like at the last minute. Um, uh -huh. That's the the general vibe that I get from the guy is he's very dishonest. Interesting. Well, yeah, you would debate it if you were confident, you know, so and you yeah. should be confident at that level if that's what you're telling the world. What do you think was wrong? You know, can you go into detail off the top of your head what you think was wrong with his conclusion? Yeah, so um, basically he was using um, angiography um, to look at sten uh, stenosis. Um, he wasn't actually measuring plaque volume. He was mm. just looking at uh, arteries that had stenosis, so they've narrowed. That type of imaging technique cannot look uh, for uh, plaque volume, mm. and he was claiming plaque volume platform, can regress yeah. with his dietary intervention. Mm. So he wasn't even using the right uh, imaging technique. And um, with angiograms, depending on the angle at which you take the, uh, it's basically like a photo looking at the arteries. Yeah. Depending on the angle, you can, um, it, like, again, if you're looking at a tube, the tube is like bent on one side. If you actually change the angle, it can look like it's opened. So that's uh -huh. another uh, failure, but basically he was using a completely wrong imaging technique. There were also other weird issues with the paper. Um, he excluded a number of uh, deaths because he felt they weren't um, related to the dietary treatment or um, he, he thought they weren't cardiovascular disease deaths or somehow uh, weren't uh, valid for the study. He, he never really uh, explained that, and that was going to be fleshed out with the debate with uh, Avi, but he, he excluded mm. a lot of deaths from the trial. Okay, that's interesting. Um, so, yeah. Okay, so, but you think that it could still potentially be the case that a particular whole food plant-based diet could reverse heart disease, but the evidence that was pre pre presented of the people who made that conclusion doesn't prove that um it's possible under certain given circumstances but I, I i would say it's pretty unlikely so um right <clears throat> now there's not really any good data that plaque regression can occur to any significant extent um there there mm. haven't been any trials that have actually shown that for one thing because i thought that that i've actually had... used the yeah Sorry, go on mate i was just gonna say because i thought that they had a bunch of case studies of people who had heart disease, did their program, don't got heart disease no more. So, um, no, no, nah, that's not a thing. Really? I, I thought they had a whole program so, where they like they <coughs> got them on the diet. They actually have hold retreats, get them on a diet, 
for however long, get them, um, you know, moving daily and de-stressing. And they had this whole recipe. And then I so thought that they were having good results. You can... Yeah, so there have been, like, the Ornish trials. Cadwell Esselstyn did his own uh, trial. Um, what they found was you can improve symptoms. So you can get rid of things like angina. Uh, you can re reduce cardiovascular disease deaths. Um, you can increase life expectancy, recurrent events, things like that. But as far as actually regressing plaque volume, hasn't been any paper currently that has shown you can reduce it to any clinically significant degree uh i think ornish he actually used the, the correct imaging technique but the actual reduction in platform volume was minuscule like tiny right, tiny tiny right. so um the the other problem is most plaques are calcified so uh i don't know how you would actually get rid of uh calcified plaque volume um the the degree to which a plaque can be calcified can vary tremendously uh, it can be like near 0% uh, and it can be close to 100%. Uh, on average, it's about 70% uh, of the plaque volume is going to be calcified. Um, what, what was his, He was a former uh, editor for uh, a journal. Um, I, I can't remember his name now, but he had this theory that it's possible if you lower cholesterol enough that say if you have a typical distribution of plaque where it's about 70% calcified, 30% fatty, uh, fatty uh, tissue, it, it's possible that that 30% can go away and uh, a 30% reduction in plaque volume would be clinically significant. Mm. Um, so it's po but it's never been done before. Mm. So maybe could happen over a long enough period of time, but it, it doesn't look like it. Okay, interesting. Um, so what about, I mean, all right, let's just summarize. You are very convinced by the evidence you've seen in three prospective cohorts that all show the same thing. Not only is being, not only is being on a plant exclusive diet perfectly healthy for everyone, that seems to be the general consensus with the nutrition scientists around the world um the academy of nutrition and dietetics the one in australia the one in new zealand the one in canada the one in the uk etc etc all say basically the same thing about a vegan diet perfectly healthy may have many health benefits so you're convinced on that and these are three of the main studies that um you have come to that conclusion from have there been any things that you've seen that have made you question uh you know that being a fact you know like because i know obviously a lot of people out there are trying to argue the point that no being vegan isn't healthy i need to eat meat we need meat for this we need meat for that we have to we have to we will evolve this way and blah 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 so have you found that there's been anything that's sort of thrown you off a bit or that you've found like you know for example maybe the conversion of vitamin a or i don't know just anything where you felt like um you know a bit shook up by something um, haven't been shook up by anything. There have been a few studies and meta-analyses that have come out uh, lately questioning the lipid hypothesis, but those studies tend to be pretty bad. Uh, they have like clear method uh, methodological issues. So um, there, there's been a few studies looking at saturated fat intake and whether or not it actually is linked to heart disease. Um, the only trials that haven't found a link between saturated fat and heart disease have big methodological errors, like uh, the amount of saturated fat uh, as a proportion of calories in the diet. Um, so that hasn't really made me raise an eyebrow or anything. Um, you mentioned vitamin A specifically. Uh, there are people who convert uh, pro-vitamin A carotenoids into vitamin A uh, at a lower rate. Um, that doesn't actually predict um, vitamin A status. So there, there hasn't really been anything that's made me question anything. Mm. What about a particular condition, particular illness, anything like that, where you've thought, okay, this person really can't be vegan. They, or these people really can't, be, can't survive adequately on a vegan diet. 
No, um, I, I, there's some like weird marginal cases where I, I've seen people just claim they have, you know, some sort of condition like ulcerative colitis and they mm. say they felt better like on a carnivore diet. Um, I, I haven't seen any disease that can't be uh, effectively treated um and it would make you impo like make it impossible to follow some sort of vegan diet like mm. there's no known disease where uh it, it would make it impossible for somebody to be vegan um i i've just seen you know random assholes online like on you know facebook groups and shit say i've had all sort of colitis or some sort of bowel disease and every time i eat broccoli it in that's you know anybody can make any kind of stupid claim like that but um, I've seen plenty of vegans who have said they had ulcerative colitis when they yeah. ate meat, and then yeah. you know they switched to a vegan diet, and they made it you work. know it improved. So uh, th there's nothing in particular. Okay. Um, what about the people? Who, because first of all, someone might say, "Well, yeah, that." What about all the ex-vegans? And what I would say about that is, you mean the ones who started on a fruitarian diet? and then yeah. did a bunch of fasting and they didn't eat an adequate vegan diet. You can't just say, oh, I ate a vegan diet, which was a bunch of, I don't know, bananas or like, you gotta eat a proper vegan diet. You know, you gotta eat an adequately or appropriately planned vegan diet is a specific wording in um, some of the literature. So they, a lot of these people, and you can see it written all, all over them. They're on the next trend. Yeah, I'm gonna be vegan now. I tried this and I did that and I did that diet and I'm gonna be vegan, I'm gonna like, be fruitarian and or i'm gonna do raw veganism just eat raw food why and then oh, i didn't feel good of course you didn't feel good you weren't getting enough calories you weren't eating a, an appropriately planned diet no wonder you felt like shit it wasn't the vegan diet's fault it was you didn't eat how you're supposed to eat on if you want to be on a vegan diet yeah most of these ex-vegan stories fall into like two categories either people get to like some point where they can't be fucked anymore and for no particular reason they just quit mm. and they'll make some stupid excuse like i travel a lot and when i'm at the airport like the only options are you know like meat options so you know whatever throw my hands in the air i'll just yeah. eat meat mm -hmm. Uh, or there are these idiots who followed some weird diet, like some like raw fruitarian diet, and then they say, I didn't feel well, I couldn't sleep, or this or that, and then they start eating meat again. Um, like, I, I remember, and a few of these cases were bizarre. Um, Ravana, she said she had some sort of uh, I, I like IBS or SIBO or something, and it could have mm. been treated just fine with uh, antibiotics. Mm -hmm. And she just decided Didn't not to. Yeah. And Rather she just ate instead. meat. That's the yeah, story, Rale you know, which only yeah. came out after someone, some fan took a video of her eating a plate of fish. And then she was like, oh yeah, actually, yeah. okay. Yeah. I've been eating animals and it's just because of this. Maybe, maybe she was just making a yeah. quick buck on veganism, which I'm sure she made. And then you have like, uh, and then you have raw alignment, similar kind of story. I think she yeah, said she a lot of stories had like, like mold or something in her house. Like it, it's just, you know, nonsense. Yeah. Bonnie Rebecca, she said she was cholesterol <laughs> deficient. Shut the fuck up. Uh, and, and then she started eating eggs and oh, I felt better eating like. Yeah, cool. Yeah, it, it doesn't make any okay, sense. Okay, so now they feel better, you're gonna go back to being vegan now? You know, now that you solved your yeah. problem? Nah, I just wanna keep eating chickens. Like I hung out with her a couple of times. I made her and a friend's sushi once, tofu sushi, you know? And it just freaks me out, bro. Like they were so vegan. You know that we're all like we're talking about animals and there's clearly so much not that. <laughs> clearly not i know yeah. and that's what's trippy about it. it's like whoa what happened to you 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 felt like i feel about this situation and now you just the next video well, after ta saying that you're not vegan you make this video with like da, 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 vlog music as you're getting out eggs yeah. and all of a sudden you're cracking eggs now after 300 vegan videos of you making vegan food and now it's just like yeah. the same same vlog music but with eggs where you know came from a place of horrific cruelty but that doesn't boom just switch that off like that's crazy that's fucking and nuts bro by the way like the mechanism in which they claim they fix their health issues like bonnie rebecca said she was cholesterol deficient for one thing there's no such thing as cholesterol deficiency and two 
if you were cholesterol deficient, the best way to increase her cholesterol would be to eat saturated fat. Um, so she could eat coconut oil, palm yeah. oil, mm -hmm. get her uh, cholesterol up, but she decided to eat eggs. It, it doesn't make any <clears throat> sense. It doesn't make any sense. And that's why a lot of it is just bullshit. And that's the worst part. Yeah. Don't come and bullshit all of us. Just be like, look, I'll admit it. I really miss the taste of meat and the vegan meat just yeah. ain't cutting it for me. I know this is ridiculous, but I'm ridiculous. Sorry, everyone. Instead, you have to discredit veganism, throw all the animals under the bus by doing it and make up a big lie and a whole big fucking story that a bunch of people believe. And then they're like, oh, oh, respect for speaking your truth. Maybe I shouldn't be vegan. You know, I've been feeling a little bit um, tired lately. And yeah, it's probably that I am. A I'm also cholesterol deficient. Like, fucking you idiots. You, you don't realize how just fade away, fade away. You know, don't don't come out with this whole song and story about it and then discredit veganism just because you and to the flavor of cows again. Yeah. And like a lot of these people are hypochondriacs. So, you know, we're like these really complex biological organisms where anything wrong can happen to you at any minute. Like you might have months where you're super tired and feeling off. You might have like days where you feel great. Like that's kind of the normal ebb and flow of things. And yeah. um these people just think, oh, there's got to be some like horrible thing wrong with me. And then they'll like do all these weird things to try to fix their issues. And they'll still be there no matter what they do. Like uh, that idiot Frank Defano is a good example yep. of this. And that um, idiot he said Tim he... Sheaf. Oh, he yeah. Was, he yeah, was looking Tim for Sheaf. this perfect. I just don't feel like, you know, per, per, I could feel better in my body. Bro, you jump off buildings and off big rocks and roll around and shit all the time. Maybe just a little bit sore. You know, like you're still doing all this crazy shit. You're obviously not suffering that bad. Same with Leo Venus. Or, or no, yeah. sorry, he, he did, he John had his Venus. whole own other shit. John Venus. Yeah, yeah. nah, I just don't. Mate, look at ya. You look better than 99.9% .9 of people on the earth, but a vegan diet isn't cutting it anymore. Shut the fuck up. You just want to eat meat because your family, a bunch of hunters, and you want to go kill animals too because it looks fun and you feel like you're missing out and you don't like being ostracized. Just be honest about it instead of making yeah. out like, yeah, nah, vegan diet's unhealthy, everyone. I was wrong. You idiot. Yeah, but all, all these people have the same problems they had before. Like Frank Defano has, um, you know, done video after video on this. He said he used to follow like a plant-based diet where he was eating like blueberries and kale all the time. He said he had, you know, digestive issues. He was having like diarrhea. He couldn't sleep. Guess what? He still has those problems. He talks about throwing up and vomiting all the time. Diarrhea, can't sleep, feels like crap, has no energy. He, he's gone yeah. like from plant-based diet to nothing but meat to now a mix. That's and fruit. he has the yeah. same problems. So. Yeah, man. Maybe it's not diet related. Like I, yeah. you know, I made a video probably a year or so ago after I'd had about six, seven months off social media, I'd been suffering a lot of chronic pain. I think I spoke to you once or twice in that time. And um, cause I was watching a lot of your videos, bro. They actually brought me so much comfort. There was not much I could do in this time. You know, I could barely get up and down off the ground. I was suffering all the time. And I was just going through all your videos and like, you know, ask yourself and Dr. RV and a bunch of stuff like that, that was like the most interesting thing to me. But it was so soothing, bro, because every time someone debates one of you guys, they end up looking ridiculous and you guys always dominate. And it was soothing. It was soothing my, you know, broken activist heart. And I was just sitting there not really being able to do much, but seeing you guys always do all this, like I loved it, man. So yeah, it's, um, it's very frustrating to see all these ex vegans And then dude, also I'm sure there's people who just like, Look how well these ex-vegan videos do. And then they can get famous from eating meat yeah. because they're an ex-vegan. They've got a story. They'll get invited on podcasts. This is going to get me some money. Boom. And they go that route and they, they do it. They make some money and they sell a new cookbook. And it's just like a whole, there's just no consideration of the ramifications of what they're doing or not the right considerations. And it's just so crazy. Yeah. Um, I think a lot of these people who become ex-vegan, I, I think they see their popularity weaning and uh, they're kind of attention whores and that's a way of them getting attention. Uh, there's this guy who was actually in my Discord server. Um, he called himself Wiener Workouts and he claimed he was vegan and everything. And he had a YouTube channel and stuff and he was, you know, doing vlogs about how he's vegan, trying to build muscle and crap. 
he ended up uh, going on Sverige's channel talking about how he quit veganism because he couldn't build any muscle. And I, I think it was entirely just due to um, him just wanting attention. Like, uh, right. this is a guy who was trying to build a social media presence and then it, it just wasn't working out for him. Like, especially going on somebody like Sparage's channel, the guy is an actual actual whack job. Totally. He came to, committed a mass stabbing at his high school. He's yeah. been institutionalized a few times. He tried to murder his ex-girlfriend and child. Like, the guy is That's a stuff. serious, dangerous individual. And you're you going on his channel to talk about ex-veganism. Yeah, yeah, wow. Like, yeah, that's crazy, man. So yeah. These people want attention. Nah, exactly. There's a lot of reasons for it. And the one reason that there isn't is that it was unhealthy and they couldn't do it because their body wouldn't allow it. Like, that's the bottom line yeah. here. Yeah, they could have done it. They had a bunch of different bullshit excuses why they didn't want to do it anymore, which is crazy to me. I don't get it. Like, what the hell? It, you know, I love the food I eat, man. I, I eat TVP every day. You know, I love that meaty TVP texture. It's cheap, it's affordable, it lasts longer, there's no cross-contamination, it's delicious, it's like, it's easy to make, you know, like, I'm good, I don't, I don't miss meat ever, for 10 years I never missed that, and I used to eat it every single day, and like, with the abundance of choice now, that more and more and more coming out, and just so many different options, I just don't understand why you would go to all the trouble of telling everyone you're vegan, and you know, making this whole stance about it, making YouTube videos and a YouTube channel about it and then flip flop. And when you have seen the footage of the animals and you seemed like you cared about that, I, it's just like, it blows my mind. And it's not just these fake ass vegans. It's also activists sometimes, dude. You know, I heard about a few people who shock, just shock everyone who knows them because, and, and it's probably a similar thing, bro. Like, yeah, that maybe it's an attention thing. Maybe it's just they were never vegan for the right reasons in the first place, even though they pretended to be. And yeah, it's a trippy situation, dude. Human human psychology is a weird, weird thing. Yeah, yeah. I I think it most of it has to be attention. Uh, just going out of your way to talk about it. Uh, these people are just attention whores. Yeah. All right. Well. So look. So. I'm, I want people to just, um, you know, hear those uh, studies again, bro, if you don't mind just mentioning them one more time. So, because you're saying these are the best studies we should pay attention to for us to argue our case. So they'd be the best ones to study and learn and be able to explain. So can you just mention the three again? Yeah, Adventist Health Study, Oxford Vegetarian Cohort, and the Nurses Health Study. And those are ongoing cohorts. Cool. Um, and what about... You know, from the other side of things, like a, basically everyone who is a proponent of eating meat, you know, everyone who's saying, no, we need it. Everyone who's saying, but what about creatine? All of these people are just like, what do they think they've got? What What is it that they think they've got that convinces them? You know, a similar question to what I asked you. What do they think they've got that's so conclusive that is giving them justification to eat their diet? Um, most of these people just think that you can't get enough nutrition on a vegan diet. Like thing. this keeps happening. I don't know why OBS studio disconnected, but yeah, we still good. Go ahead, bro. Yeah. Uh, so I, I think usually when you hear meat eater, meat eater arguments for why you should eat meat, it, it's usually, it usually comes down to protein. Um, they'll talk about like, uh, amino acid profile and bioavailability. <laughs> Uh, sometimes they'll mention micronutrients like iron or vitamin D3. Uh, and you mentioned creatine. Creatine, like, again, the only way to get an efficacious dose of creatine is to take a supplement. So just take a creatine supplement. So but, even uh, if you they're get... eating a bunch of meat, it's not really doing anything for them regarding creatine. Yeah, no. In order to actually get an efficacious dose where you're going to improve power output when you're exercising or some of the mental health benefits... Um, you need to take take a supplement anyway. You're getting very minuscule amounts when you eat meat. And um, again, you can get an adequate amount of protein on a vegan diet just fine. You don't even need to eat any more protein than a meat eater would. And uh, you can get all the micronutrients you need too. Like uh, yeah. again, vitamin D3 supplements exist. Everybody should be taking a supplement because mm. uh, there's very few reliable food sources 
Uh, the only food that really has an appreciable amount of D3 is uh, fish, and you need to eat like an entire salmon, basically, in order to get your RDA, which is uh, 2,000 I used. Cool, man. So you would recommend, but for people getting enough sunlight every day, they're probably fine. It's just people who are a bit more indoors or in the... Um, I wouldn't say probably. Uh, okay, the awesome. sun is a very unreliable source. Y you can actually find studies on white Californian surfers who are vitamin D3 deficient. Mm, interesting. So, That's um, surprising. E even people who spend all day out outside and are light skinned, they can still be D uh, vitamin D deficient, uh, especially if you're darker skinned, you're especially susceptible mm. to it. So everybody should just be taking a vitamin D supplement. Okay. Um, I think a lot of people probably don't realize that the sun isn't so effective. And obviously, sun's you, also really bad for you. It it destroys yeah. your skin, so you I want to avoid though, it. I thought though to get enough D three, it was like twenty minutes max would would do should do the job. Not no, necessarily. not necessarily. Okay, uh, especially if you're darker skinned. Right. So okay, vitamin D three important not just for vegans though for everybody, or would you say it's more important for vegans? Um, actually, if you look at the Adventist Health study. They found vegans had lower rates of vitamin D deficiency, and it's because they were more physically active. They were more likely okay. to go outside and get sunlight. So it was uh, I wouldn't say vegans are particularly related. susceptible. Yeah, it's not really diet related. Someone wants to know how many calories you eat a day. Uh, right now, I'm eating probably about 2,500, 3,000. I'm on a deload right now, so I'm not training as much. But um, when I'm training, probably bump that up like an extra 500 calories. Cool. Um, sweet. So basically these guys have got nothing. We have the dominant studies proving our diet is superior and people are just dragging the chain. They just don't want to change. They're stubborn. They like meat and they don't like the idea of being vegan. Yeah. Yeah. Basically, uh, How people are just ridiculous. addicted to eating meat. They yep, just they can't stop. They can't stop. Won't stop. No matter how much like they'll, they'll kill for it over and over and over again it's mental yeah mental they're selfish illness. dickheads they indeed are very nuts so all right cool man well yeah you would recommend a d3 supplement and you would recommend obviously b12 um we take one once yeah. a week it's like a pretty high dose but from what i've read that is good enough would you agree with something like that yeah, so 250 micrograms of cyanicum almond per day is what you should be taking. So as long as you're getting um, that sort of relative dose, you can take something like uh, a once a week supplement that's at a higher dose, like a thousand, yeah. if you want. Mm, cool. Um, yeah, I just find that easier. And, and then anything else? I mean, I think there's a bit of discussion about whether we actually need an omega, omega um, supplement or not. Uh, you can take it. There's not really much evidence supporting the benefit of uh, DHA supplements. Um, they don't seem to reduce heart disease risk. They don't seem to prevent cognitive decline. Mm. So I wouldn't be too worried about that, but you can take it. Um, for certain populations of people, probably a good idea to take it. So if you're a woman who's pregnant or planning to be pregnant, or if you're a growing child, it seems like there could be a benefit to it. So you might want to take it in those, those cases. Okay. Um, someone just want to know if you consume chia or flax seeds for omega-3. I personally have flax seeds in my smoothie every morning. Yeah, I eat, I eat flax seeds. Yeah, can't even taste them. Same with the... Yeah, I, I like with, the taste. They have like yeah. a nice nutty taste. Yeah, I put them in a smoothie and I don't even notice they're there. But um, same with same with greens, you know. I put a big chunk of kale in my smoothie, and you know, it tastes a little bit, but it's not. It doesn't taste like a salad. It tastes like, you know, just a delicious smoothie still. So yeah, good if I have a kale smoothie, I like mixing it in with uh, blueberries and really blending it up well in a Vitamix. But um, I usually just eat broccoli. Cool, cool man. Um, is there anything else important diet related that you think? people should know that they're maybe a little bit confused about or lost on. Like I think a good one that you mentioned is probably to stop saying that a vegan diet can reverse heart disease. It can, it can, we can agree. I think that it can probably prevent it in a large amount of cases, but reverse it once it's already there. No, not necessarily. 
No. Uh, there's no evidence that you can reverse it. Uh, now, you can improve symptoms. You can reduce the likelihood of a future heart attack or another heart attack mm -hmm. uh, or stroke. But as far as disease reversal, that's a specific claim. And uh, right, right now, there's no evidence you can do that. Okay. So then just on a broader, you know, broader health kind of thing, do you think there's anything that like you wanted to get your point across about vegans and vegan companion animals. Um, is there anything health related where you think people, like one thing I would say is that I think people are probably under eating, a lot of vegans I think are probably under eating calories. Um, I just, I don't know, that's just what I've noticed over and over again in my own personal sphere. Um, I think they're yeah, probably Yeah, uh, I think especially women. Okay. Uh, especially women, they're obsessed with being skinny, and um, I, I think a lot of girls are kind of, yeah, I think uh, just eating more, period, probably a good idea for a lot of people. Um, you can use apps like Chronometer to track your, your dietary intake. Yep. Um, so you, yeah, um, like, you know, vegans tend to eat less just because the food volume is higher. So uh, if you are prone to under eating, if you're kind of naturally skinny, that might be something that you want to um, keep an eye on. Mm. And uh, I'd say women in particular, because like, you know, like they're so obsessed with being lean and skinny and looking pretty. Yeah. Yeah. Um, there, I've seen um, a few, I can't remember her name now, uh, Maddie or something, Maddie Lindburner. She was really, really thin, like very lean, exercised a lot. She ended up quitting veganism and claiming it was because of like really painful periods or something but it, it was probably related to her just not eating enough exercising too much and just being too thin is yep. she was very very thin um mm. not quite anorexic but she looked very thin she like, she needed like right on the edge problems. there right interesting yeah. yeah i i think um you know even just not on that end but on the other end of guys trying to grow I think, like me personally, I, I started making an effort to grow more muscle a couple of years ago when I got down to like my lightest weight in the peak of when I was suffering the most with chronic pain. So I wasn't, I didn't want to eat. I didn't want to train. I couldn't train if I wanted to. I was just like, you know, doing what I could, stretching and yoga stuff and rolling on PVC pipe and shit like that. But um, I lost a lot of weight. And when I started trying to put on weight, I ate just what I thought was a decent amount and it was a decent amount you know I wasn't going to die or anything but I, I was trying to put on weight and then when I did use chronometer punched in the numbers put in all the food I was eating in a day I was like I'm like a thousand calories under what I'm supposed to be eating apparently to grow so what but I'm already eating all these meals and um, you know I just changed sort of some of the foods to make them more high calorie food in, in whichever way I was lacking and things like that but um, yeah I definitely think that a lot of people could probably well they should just use chronometer and see where they're at at least for a day or two and it'll give them a better idea of like shit i'm never i never eat this and look i'm totally lacking in vitamin c or i'm totally lack my protein is so low or whatever it is you know you should be eating um and hitting those those targets every day yeah, uh, you can fool yourself pretty easily with food volume. Uh, a lot of vegan foods are very voluminous, and yep. you could be eating like very large bowls of food, but not eating a lot of calories. So it's exactly. good to track things. Yeah, exactly. And yeah, you don't have to track it forever, but you just get an idea of where you're at, and then you can, you know, have a better idea of how to adjust and um, eat properly going forwards. Um, yeah. But yeah. So what about you, though, man? Is there anything you think? Um, people should know that they're kind of missing and would do good for them to learn? Um, I think the most common nutrient deficiencies for vegans are uh, iodine, um, I think zinc, and yep. um, that's that's about it. Uh, you know, just make sure you're um, tracking your nutrient intake. You might want to consider taking a multivitamin if you're um, if you track your food intake and you notice you're low on a few things. Um, and everybody should be taking B12 and uh, either D2 or D3. It doesn't really matter, but mm. um, everybody should be taking a vitamin D supplement. Right. So iodine, though, I mean, my thought is that I'm eating enough typical table salts that is fortified with iodine, and I should be sweet. Is do you agree with that? 
No, uh, table salt is still pretty low in iodine. Um, okay. It is a source, but it, it's not particularly high. You're probably not going to meet your RDA. Um, mm. So you want to eat uh, sea vegetables occasionally. So like make uh, you know nori like sushi, sushi wraps. Or something. Something how like how that. often yeah. would you need to have a sushi wrap? Like you should have one one a day, or more like one a week. Uh, no, probably like maybe a couple times a week would be enough. Okay. That's, that's um, you can easy. also mix like different sea vegetables and salads. Um, you could take a supplement, but you know, just make sure you don't take too much if you're taking a supplement. Right. Okay. Um, so a couple of sheets of nori a week probably do the job. Stuff delicious anyway. Yeah. What do you mean when you say sea vegetables? You got some common examples or it's a bit more of a... Yeah, so like nori, there's a lot yeah. of different ones. There's like dulse, you know, you can actually sprinkle dulse flakes on things. Yeah, yeah, cool. That's, that's delicious too. And that chewy seaweed, I don't know what it's called. Maybe it is maybe it is that. I know you can do the... There's... I don't know what it's called, bro. There's another one that's like, you put on salad. Wakami? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Might be wakami. Yeah. yeah, I think it is. I, I, I think that's what I'm thinking of. Delicious. Uh, anything else then, bro? Anything else you think vegans would do well to learn or perhaps something convincing? Let's do both. Anything, if there's anything else you want vegans to know about health, nutrition, um, anything regarding the vegan diet, and also maybe you'd want to give like just a paragraph or something. If you had like one opportunity to convince a whole bunch of people who eat animals and convince them with the health argument, how would you go about that? Like, what would you say, you know, what kind of maybe facts and figures or statistics or what do you think would be a good way to summarize the argument that you would think they would find convincing? Yeah, one uh, big thing that's still pretty prevalent is this fear of oils, um, particularly seed oils like canola oil. Um, yep. They're good for you. Olive oil is probably the best oil for you, but uh, these other seed oils like canola oil, um, they're good for you. There's mm -hmm. no link between any inflammatory conditions. They don't contribute to heart disease. In fact, they do the opposite. Uh, if you look at any randomized trials, um, eating these oils is good for you. Okay. So don't be afraid of oils. Cooking with oil is fine. Um, you probably should be sprinkling olive oil on your food. Uh, it's good for you. So that's one thing that a lot of vegans, um, you know, like a lot yeah. of them still think and right, let's, myth let's, that we, they perpetuate. Let's talk about that for a sec because all the, I went on the, um, I can't remember what the cruise was called now, but basically it was a cruise and there was a event with, who was on there? There was like Dr. Gregor, there was Esselstyn, I think was there. Um, T. Colin Campbell, there was a bunch of the guys all giving lectures on different days. I watched all the lectures and all of them, pretty much all of them, there was, um, what's his name as well? The, fuck, he's the friendliest dude. What's his name? Clapper, Dr. Clapper. Yeah, mm. they all basically had a unified message of avoid oil. It was actually salt, oil, sugar. But um, especially, I think they made a pretty big deal about oil. Um, now I personally avoid oil, but that's because I don't want the extra calories. You know, I don't want the extra calories mm -hmm. from flat fat. I'm trying to stay lean and it just doesn't really fit with what I'm, what I'm working on. But, um, that was really my main reason for avoiding it all this time. And I still do, and I don't miss it and it's easy, so it's fine. But for people who are going out of their way to avoid it because they think it's unhealthy and you know, I'm pretty sure these guys had their reasons beyond it's high in calories and low in nutrients, therefore not really the best food for you guys to eat. Fill your stomach with something more like more full, uh, you know, more like volume and also that has more, more nutrients kind of thing. So do you know any of the reasons why they're saying that oil is not healthy? Yeah, they're, they're really bad reasons. So like, yeah, if you're eating a lot of oil, you can overeat calories. That's a possibility. Um, but if you're not really at risk of overeating and especially if you're at risk of undereating uh, or if your fat intake is like super rock bottom low, you probably want to add oil uh, to your diet. You should be getting about 20, 30 percent of your calories coming from fat. Seems to be yep. ideal. If your fat intake is super low, uh, you could have issues with um, depression uh, that can actually trigger depression. 
Mm -hmm. um, you can just have like feel like you have low energy. Um, it can make it harder to absorb fat soluble vitamins, stuff like that. So um, yeah, in cases where you have a tendency to overeat, sure, avoid oils. Um, otherwise, mm -hmm. yeah, oils are perfectly healthy. Uh, they have really stupid reasons for recommending against oils. Um, again, if you look at randomized trials and large prospective cohorts, uh, consuming these oils is associated with longevity, lower heart rates of heart disease, better overall health outcomes. Um, Esselstein has claimed that uh, there's like some study in monkeys where they fed them oil and they still developed heart disease. Okay. Who the fuck cares? Right. Uh, they're monkeys. They can do whatever the hell they want. <clears throat> um, he he's also claimed that you see um, oils uh, basically like shut down your endothelial cell function mm -hmm. temporarily. Like like again, it, it's a, a weird mechanistic reason for recommending avoiding oils. Okay. Uh, it, it, again, if you actually health look at health wise, outcomes, yeah. Oils are good for you. Uh, I can understand right. why some of them, because they deal with a lot of like fat, really unhealthy people, they want to get them away from eating fried food. Um, yeah, it makes sense to recommend yeah. to your patients, you know, avoid oily food because it'll get them away from things like fried food and overeating. <clears throat> but for sure, if, if you're if a that's... normal person, yeah, it, oils are fine. Okay, cool. Do you think I just thought of this then? This because there's a huge anti like at first it was just these doctors i heard say don't eat oil it's bad and i was like cool i won't because you guys probably know better than me and i didn't and stuck to it after later thinking oh maybe oil's not as healthy unhealthy as i thought but i still don't really feel the need to add so many calories from fat to my diet you know i'd rather get my calories from something more that i enjoy more but um it's not just them anymore i've never heard anyone talk like this and now all of a sudden all these carnivore dudes and a bunch of other people are like oils, seed oils. Oh, but it has seed oils. Don't eat that seed oil, seed oils. Do you think that that might have something to do with the fact that Beyond Meat, Impossible Meat, vegan meats have seed oils? I think it might be like, if we say that seed oils are bad, we can say, look, meat doesn't have seed oils. And that's just, they're like one little thing they can, you know, try to I it. don't think so like beyond meat okay. in particular they usually use coconut oil i i think only now they're switching to avocado oil for their uh beyond burgers mm. so i i don't think so um it, it's basically just because they're idiots and they want to blame something else on heart disease so right. they Makes sense. they're trying to say saturated fat is good for you and the reason why there's so much heart disease is because people are eating all these plant-based oils and it, it's just not true Okay, saturated fat and cholesterol. I want to talk about that in one sec. Um, first, I just want to answer a couple of the people who donated. So there's just two, I think. Sure. But um, they got both questions for you, bro. So we got Matthew Valenci. Hope I said that right. He said, hey, Vegan Gains, boy, I haven't seen you around lately. Where have you been? You've not been streaming, bro. Um, I have missed a few nights of streaming because I've just been tired lately and I've just been sleeping uh -huh. a lot, but, uh, yeah, I've still been streaming. Okay, um, yeah, I've had mate. some streams in the morning. Cool. You ain't bailed streaming or nothing. He asked also if you will be streaming on your own channel later today. Yeah, I will be. Sweet. Cool. And thanks Matt for the donations, you legend. Um, bro. So cholesterol and saturated fat you're saying this shit causes heart disease and cancer right uh cancer not, well? cancer, but, not cancer but but heart, uh, heart disease okay just the number one killer so and a lot of people are saying wrong oh you still believe that that shit's been debunked ages ago so what do you say to something like that yeah so there's meta-analyses of randomized trials uh linking saturated fat with heart disease it's pretty undeniable at this point uh, it, it's tan it's basically like you know flat Earth denial, really. Mm. Uh, the evidence is so strong. Really, so you're uh, like, same with yeah. Go ahead, sorry. Yeah, same with cholesterol. If you eat dietary cholesterol, your serum cholesterol will increase, and that's the biggest risk factor for heart disease. So, uh, avoiding those two things is really important for avoiding heart disease. Cool. Seems nuts to 
<laughs> claim otherwise if it's so convincing so conclusive it's just, just such a cope you know it, it's a huge cope and, <laughs> and it's a cope they have to make to justify eating meat yeah. because again, that's, that's what they're telling a, their clients a major to do source too. of saturated fat and cholesterol yeah the major source well that's very sad for them and everybody who takes their terrible terrible advice um okay so do you have similar to how i asked you about the best studies on that what would you say are the best studies that have given you so much confidence that cholesterol and saturated fat lead to heart disease yeah um the scientific advisory committee on nutrition uh they have a compilation of meta-analyses uh, on that topic i uh, should check those out Mm -hmm. um, the European Atherosclerosis Society has a really good paper on uh, the link between cholesterol, serum cholesterol, and uh, heart disease. So uh, I would look at those two sources. Okay, cool. Easy. Uh, anything else then you want to say? Oh, so let's get to part two, which is, I mean, you've kind of done it already, like being very convincing in why vegan diet is good, but how would you summarize it to someone you were just trying to convince a dude at the gym that you should do a vegan diet, bro, because da, 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 da. what would you say that you think they would find people would find convincing? Well, the main argument I would make would be an ethical argument. So I would just run name the trade on them. Um, I'd ask them yeah. like, why would you, you know, if you love all these other animals like dogs and cats, why don't you, you know, show love to all these other animals you're eating? Uh, I think that's a very convincing argument for most people. And if they have, um, you know, reservations because they're worried about nutritional issues, then I'd point them to the American Dietetics Association paper. Um, I'd mention the large prospective cohorts that show a link between meat eating and disease and the fact that vegans tend to live longer, have lower risk of disease. And uh, if they have other uh, concerns like protein intake, you know, there's... Um, the Stanford paper, uh, I think it's titled uh, Amino Acids and Protein uh, on a Vegetarian Diet, on Vegetarian Diets Review. Um, you know, those sorts of sources that just show you can get enough protein, you can get enough nutri uh, nutrition. Uh, I just point them there. Cool. Easy, man. Okay, so moving on from health and, um, you know, talk. how much, you got a bit of time, bro? You got still a little bit more time? Yeah. Bro? All right, cool. Let's move on then to the ethics, which is, um, you know, you one of the best to, to talk about it, bro. And something probably the best phrase that I have adopted from you that has been like an umbrella for, or like a foundation, maybe a better way to say it, a foundation for how I discuss animal rights is animal rights are a logical extension of human rights i love that dude it's just so simple it explains it so well um you know in yeah. such few words but would you please elaborate on what that means to you yeah so um everybody's familiar with the vegan society's definition um i think it roughly goes uh veganism is a way of living which seeks to eliminate as much as possible and practical all means of animal exploitation uh cruelty and suffering for food and variety of other purposes like clothing it's not a very good definition um there's a lot of vague wording in there um like what's possible what's practicable what constitutes that uh does it mean you know if you're suffering or starving it's okay to kill and eat animals if it's inconvenient for you, if you need it for your job, is it okay to like kill and exploit animals? So it, it doesn't do anything to grant animals rights, which is kind of a strange definition to go by if you call yourself an animal rights activist. <laughs> um, if you look at like, you know, probably the best framework for, you know, how we deal ethically, uh, deal with each other ethically or anything ethically it's probably human rights we have a very comprehensive uh human rights um you know protocol uh with you know the law the legal system uh how we interact with each other on a daily basis so um the the best way to protect animals uh, and the way that we'd want to protect ourselves is with rights uh that's why we have human rights that's why we have a legal system um it it 
it's done the best job currently of you know preventing people from getting murdered from things getting stolen for you know improving our lives and protecting uh, ourselves and each other so yeah. this weird wishy-washy terminology of reduce as much as possible and practicable that's not going to protect animals as well as giving them the same rights as human beings uh we have the most comprehensive system of protecting ourselves and each other so if we want to protect animals and we call ourselves animal rights activists we should argue for that same sort of system for protecting animals and since yeah. again humans have the most comprehensive rights right now um we should argue from a framework of granting the same human rights to animals. Totally, because we are also animals. They are similar beings with yeah. similar interests and that's what it comes yeah. down to. Why would we give them something? Why would we treat them differently? That's what name the trade is. Why would we treat them so differently when they are so similar, almost identical? You know, they. it's funny, like before I started seeing animals this way, Animals couldn't have been more different from me. A dog, I, was, I had nothing in, at all in common with a dog. And now, I, you know, there's almost everything in common with these other animals. But, but, you know, sure, there's differences. We have very sophisticated language. We wear clothes. We have sophisticated technology that we've created and whatever, whatever. But the things that matter, especially when we're talking about granting rights, is that they have interests that they want protected they are sentient beings conscious and aware of what's happening to them and suffering is bad so if they don't want to suffer just like we don't want to suffer getting stabbed in the throat feels just the same to us as it does to them and it's extremely extremely bad right so it would make sense to grant them the right of not being stabbed in the throat as an example yeah they have the same basic fundamental interests they might not have an interest in um you know participating in the political system um but they do have the same basic interests of you know having protection under the law to you know not get abused mistreated killed things like that but that's probably what you're most concerned with and um yeah. a lot of people kind of get tripped out about this idea of giving animals the same rights as human beings like oh so should you like should dogs and cats be allowed to marry should they be able to vote um for one thing if we were to tomorrow uh grant animals the same rights as human beings so what like and we do this to a ridiculous extent where they can vote you're not going to see a dog show up to, you know, a voting machine and vote for Trump. So I, I wouldn't really worry about that. But um, y the basic idea is to give animals the same rights if we were to trait equalize human beings. So if a human being were trait equalized to a dog or a cat, um, yeah, we we wouldn't give them a right to vote. Um, it, it's the voting thing is kind of weird because we do actually grant uh, voting rights to people who are severely mentally disabled. There's mm. uh, just some like weird political baggage that comes along with that. But, yeah. it, you know, in concept, you wouldn't want somebody who's severely mentally disabled to vote because they're not mentally you know, capable of doing so. They're not competent enough. But uh, yeah, the idea is to give them the same rights that we give a human being where uh, that were trade equalized. Exactly. Yeah, like they ain't going to be like, cool, I've got the right to vote now. Hmm, who should I vote for? It means absolutely nothing to them. But they would really appreciate not being enslaved and murdered and turned into our yeah. ingredients. So exactly, you know, it's pretty, um, pretty basic. Like we don't have to worry about them getting driver's licenses and shit like that. They ain't going to yeah. pass a test. Don't worry, everyone. Pigs I mean, be driving. if a dog could pass a driver's license test, why not give them a driver's license? If a license dog could drive, drive well, yeah, yeah, if they, okay, yeah. yeah, like in whatever world that would be, yeah, for sure. If they're competent as, a, as competent enough, yeah, okay, but because they're not, don't worry about it, everyone. But they, yeah. you know, that's not what we're taught. That's not really what we're talking about. But again, I think the way that you have really brought it about this logical extension from human rights makes it so easy, bro, for everybody to understand because, yeah, it's just like name the trait, um, you know, it, it's, it, I love it. It, just, it gets the speciesism out of it. 
you know it's like well, yeah we, we need to give them these things like they deserve it why don't they deserve it we shouldn't be fighting for why they do it's obvious why they do deserve these rights people need to make an argument for why they don't if they think they don't and that's impossible to do unless you want to look as ridiculous as a racist person yeah like uh, any kind of violence um has to be justified and if you're coming from a perspective of well you have to prove that you know some someone or something should deserve rights like i mean that would justify slavery until it's like somehow proved that black people should have rights uh yeah, it, it's exactly. it, it's a weird way yeah so we should assume if it's a sentient being uh we should start from a framework of it deserving rights and um if it doesn't you should you know have to prove otherwise 100 percent, 100 percent. man what do you think the future looks like you know what do you have some theories of um the progression of animal rights and how things will evolve in the in the next year yeah. in the next five years 10 years 20 years yeah i think things are steadily growing um and i think especially when we have uh technologies like uh lab grown meat um i think that's going to um hopefully become economically viable enough where it just competes with uh you know normal meat where it's cheaper better for you there's not risk of like you know contamination with yep. the coli and stuff mm -hmm. Uh, maybe uh, it can be engineered to be a bit healthier. Totally. Yeah. Less um, fat. Yeah. And um, hopefully that eliminates the animal agriculture industry, uh, yeah. I would hope. And then people can eat elephant meat, lion meat. I think that's what will yeah. draw people to it. You know, they can eat all these exotic animals and it like will make the meat, the, the cell meat industry um stand out from i mean there's other things that make it stand out it can be healthier it's better for the environment less chance of um disease outbreaks and all these kinds of things so there's a lot of reasons already but i know a lot of people will just be like it was made in a lab nah where yeah a sterile lab you got you're eating from a slaughterhouse like you don't think that's bad yeah but um you're yeah, already starting be... to see that i i think italy uh has already moved to ban uh cell cultured meat because yeah, they say there's places. like safety concerns yeah, yeah. It's, it, it has to be the meat lobby that's you know yeah, powerful, man. that's pushing them to do that. It's it's insane they got their hand in so many things. Yeah, um, I think but, Florida is trying to ban cell cell cultured meat already. Yeah, man, it's crazy that they can do that. But um, because like, especially like you're gonna ban it before, almost like it doesn't even really exist for you guys to ban. Why yeah, can't we just why can't we just sort of create it and then go from there see how it is just like pre banning yeah. it that is clearly meat yeah meat industry lobbying move so that yeah is totally fucking corrupt as um but okay you th you so you have a lot of hope in cell meat you think that that is basically like dude, that's the only thing i think that could really change in heart hearts and minds of such a large group of people who are more obsessed with eating flesh than they are with almost anything else in their life like they can't even imagine life without it it's hard bro you know we do it every day we've talked to so many people and i've talked to a lot of very reasonable pe otherwise reasonable people friends family seen years and years of my content still not changed like i don't understand i don't understand this you know i can't i can't grasp being like that because i'm not like that but a lot of people are they can see it all yeah, and um, they just still keep going and you know they're going to need it to be literally as convenient as it's the exact same thing in every way but healthier and better and no animals died and i already feel like we've got a good enough substitute with even just tvp is good enough but with the vegan meats we've already got we don't need cell-based meat in my opinion but um, you yeah. know, to, to catch on to all the mainstream and everybody who is just so incredibly selfish and stubborn, yeah, cell-based meat probably going to save the day. Yeah, most people are uh, selfish scumbags. Um, a lot of people don't what? realize just how selfish and stupid most people are. Yeah, like when true. you I when didn't... you look at things. 
like when you look at tragedies like the Holocaust, um, where an entire nation of people were on board with uh, massacring another group of people, you, you kind of realize just how easily radicalized and stupid and selfish so many people are. And I mean, mm, absolutely, animal agriculture industry is a great example they're, of that too. Like, they're preying on that. You know, they're masters of manipulation. Yeah. They've they've manipulated so many things in so many ways. You know, got milk and milk for calcium and protein for this and omegas to get from fish and it's humane and um, animals are basically nothing so it doesn't even matter that we do this and they're born for this purpose and blah 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 there's so many layers of it dude like they've done yeah. a, they've done an amazing job um, it's really hard to combat and look like yes we are the, our species is so easily manipulated S billions of people base their lives on fairy tales religions they all got different religions they all think they're the only one that holds the word of god and they will believe died and rose from the dead a few days later on with a virgin birth um walked on water water to wine the other religions flew away on a winged horse you know prophet this and that and it's like if you guys will believe that just because someone read it out of a book in front of you with a large crowd around you and you're just going to believe these massive massive claims from thousands of years ago just because someone told you even though it completely defies what our understanding is of the natural world and of physics if you're going to believe shit like that you believe anything you can believe you are yeah. so gullible so and that's the majority of people, as we see, 99, like 90 something percent of people eat animals. And I don't know the percentage of people that are religious, but fucking high. So man, you know, yeah, like it's really hard to, to, as I said, get through to people and their hearts and minds when they are, they don't even realize like that they've got already so many manip manipulations there. And these are really powerful as well, like directly relating to animal rights because so many people use their religion to justify their slaughter, getting a diet from slaughter. Yeah. And it goes hand in hand then. They're like, well, I like being able to justify eating animals by saying God said it's fine, you know? So I don't, I'm not going to get rid of that. But it's also, all motivated reasoning. Yeah, and, and same with believing in religion. It's like, yeah, this is pretty motivated reasoning because if I don't believe this, I'm going to a very bad place when I die. Or I'm going to a very mm -hmm. good place. It's all just so lost and so such a house of cards, man. But um, it's so prevalent, like so prevalent. So it's fucking crazy. Yeah, I have a pretty pessimistic view on humanity. I like I've never really liked people, and I think I just picked up on how scummy so many people are from when I was really young. And um, mm, interesting. it. We have very, very good meat substitutes, like you've already said. Yeah. Um, like I went vegan before, you know, Beyond Meat and everything, before it was cool. I was doing just fine. And it's, you know, only made it easier with all the, you know, new options. And that's still not good enough for, uh, for fucking practically everybody. And it's just because they're selfish dicks. It is, bro. Like it's, yeah. it's pathetic. It's sad. Like it's really changed my view of, humanity as well and of people and you know I just I, it's extremely disappointing like extremely disappointing to show someone slaughterhouse footage and they're just like yeah but bacon tastes good it's like yeah yeah, yeah. but what about murder how do you feel about that um it's not good but I do like bacon man it's too bad you can't turn them into fucking bacon I always say that I'm like why don't you just slaughter each other just do, do, do yeah. us all a favor, slaughter each other, eat each other. If you want to eat meat so badly, go ahead. Then, you know, you, it's fair game then. You're all part of the game. Instead of preying on yeah. innocent, dis defenseless, vulnerable animals who can't fight back. You know, like, fuck, that is not what an evolved species should be doing. Vegans somebody, are living uh, in the future, donated bro. About, yeah? Somebody donated about killing carnivorous animals. Uh, oh, yeah. Should read um, those donors out and uh, talk about that. Ah, oh, there's two here. Okay, so it's the same thing twice? No, no, no. All right, so Matthew on a spending spree. Thanks, bro. But killing all carnivore animals will harm the environment. Also, we cannot 
dolls sterilize every plant eating animal on the planet like rabbits fish and rats and he also said in another donation thanks again bro also one single study from yellowstone does not prove that we can otherwise if we kill all meat eating animals the environment will collapse the environment ah oh, the environment right what do you think bro well i know what you think tell the people <laughs> Yeah, so um, if you're like a level 1000 vegan, um, you've probably had this conversation um, about killing carnivorous animals. Yeah. So carnivorous animals have to kill other animals to survive, which would violate the rights of other animals. So the idea is to prevent gra a greater degree of rights violations, we should kill carnivorous animals. So lion might kill say i don't know 100 or a thousand gazelle in its lifetime uh if you kill that one lion you could you know potentially save a hundred or a thousand lives you know somewhere in that figure um the pushback against that is but it would destroy the environment um i'm not convinced that every ecological niche would suffer if we got rid of carnivorous animals um he mentioned Yellowstone. Um, Yellowstone's a good example of this. Uh, wolves were gone from Yellowstone for quite a while, and it didn't cause any uh, ecological issues. Um, you know, like deer and moose and elk and all that in Yellowstone didn't overpopulate. Uh, They're actually doing better without carnivores there because then they didn't have to be worried about getting killed or eaten. I think they lived much, you know, better, more peaceful lives. So if we're going to grant animals rights, and if we have an interest in reducing animal suffering and death, we should have an interest in, um, you know, protecting the rights and the interests of wild animals. So yep. in cases where it wouldn't cause ecological catastrophe, I haven't heard a good argument against killing carnivorous animals. I hate to say it in a way, but neither have I. And I've, I've, you know, I, I was talking, um, I talk about this every day now, bro. Like it's, I think it's a popular conversation because it's kind of a new conversation. I don't know who got this started, but yeah, it's, um, I think the last few years we have just logically extended human rights to animal rights. And then our veganism has extended you know, our thinking about the rights of others has extended to the wild. Should we intervene in the wild? There's a lot of horrific suffering, death and rights violations happening there. And I agree with you that it is very hard to make an argument against it. Um, because if you're thinking about the victims, which is their right to live, trumps someone else's right to kill, then... Um, it's really yeah it is hard to make i don't have a good argument against it i i kind of want to like i you know i was talking um talking yesterday about this with the nutrivore and he sort of well, going through the joe rogan joe rogan discussed our debate with sean baker on his show and um me and nick got to a point where he was sort of saying you know if the right intention was there if joe went and hunted bears it would be a an okay thing to do and like i see the logic there and i don't want to admit that that's true because i hate the idea of being like joe can you kill bears because you know it, it's a net good but um it's a fucking hard thing to argue when you are thinking about all the lives it could save you know in the human context if there is a mass murderer who we know is going to murder a thousand people in his lifetime, we're not gonna just let him go and do that. Now, ideally we're not gonna murder him. Ideally we do something less violent and usually that's what we do. Um, so hopefully with bears as an example, maybe we could feed them vegan meat, maybe we could sterilize, maybe we could separate something like this. But um, assuming those options aren't there, is it the right thing to do? Maybe it is, you know, I, I'm, I'm listening to you guys and I'm trying to argue against it and I'm struggling. Yeah, um, a lot of people, ha like uh, when I first heard the argument, it was pretty weird. Uh, I've never, I had never thought about it. And a lot mm. of people have this idea of like, you know, we're vegan, we should leave nature alone, let it do its thing, not intervene. 
Um, and I, I think what really trips people up is like they feel sympathy for these carnivorous animals because they're doing it out of necessity. Yeah, exactly. Um, exactly right. But you should have sympathy for the animals that are getting killed. Uh, I, I think Indeed. when you really think about it, you don't really care. Who you don't have as much sympathy. Majority. It's not one for one either. Yeah. Yeah. You, like, I think when you really think about it, you don't really have the majority of sympathy going to the perpetrator, the carnivores. You have the most sympathy going to the victims, the herbivores. Yeah. Like, if like xenomorphs existed you know the you know creatures from the alien movies that mm. you know kill and hunt humans we wouldn't have any problem with eradicating xenomorphs or any type of movie monster like we wouldn't care about hunting vampires or yeah. you know like what have you so um if we're fine with killing things like xenomorphs vampires uh you know any any kind of creature that would be hunting and killing us we wouldn't say like, oh, but they're doing it out of necessity. It's, you know, their natural way of living. Um, you know, it, they're, it's all part of the food chain. No, we'd have an interest in protecting ourselves and, uh, you know, trying to reduce like the amount of murder that's going on. So if you have that, that type of thinking when it comes to protecting human life, I don't know why you wouldn't have that same type of thinking when it comes to protecting uh, animal life. Yeah, I cannot disagree um i can't say that i am like fully made up my mind on this because it's like a big it's a very hard pill to swallow to consider that the right thing to do in this situation may be to kill if there's if other options have been exhausted um to kill the predator to save the victims i mean yeah like when you say it, it sounds obvious and logical but also to think about that in practice someone made a comment so we're just going to shoot the birds that eat fish out of the sky um, you know, to think of the practical implication is very wild. You know, it's like, <laughs> it fucking seems nuts, bro. But also, okay, so we don't do that. And then even more suffering and death happens. So is it really that crazy? Fucking, I don't know. Yeah, I, I think the right option is to just kill carnivorous animals. Uh, you're, caught, you're creating a situation where there's far less, you know, suffering and death. Mm which is kind of our interest. Yeah. And, and um, go ahead. Sorry, mate. Oh yeah. And um, like, again, we wouldn't use all these cope excuses like, you know, Oh, it's natural. It's part of the food chain. That's just how, you know, nature works. If it was us, you know, being hunted and killed. Um, someone said James Aspie has absolutely lost his ever loving mind talking about feeding bears, vegan meat. Wouldn't you prefer they eat a, healthy alternative to slaughtering other beings you know who suffer and die why not just give them something if we could fill their stomachs so they don't have as much urge to kill and reduce deaths <clears throat> why wouldn't we just feed them that seems pretty smart to me but yeah, um, like especially in captivity you could just feed them vegan cat or dog food and they'd probably be fine absolutely yeah uh, it makes no sense to kill an like a thousand animals to save one um, mm -hmm. fuck, what was I going to say about this? Someone also said, let me see if I can find and read it word for word. There's no practical implication of this argument. It's just a hypothetical stroke off. Now, for the longest time, I was saying this exact thing, not, not quite the exact thing, but just like interesting conversation, but can we just focus on changing humans and making them vegan? Because that's where we have control and power and that is going to make a significant difference. So let's work on that, um, which we do. But I think, tell me if I'm wrong, because what I think is happening here is just, this is a new conversation. People are trying to figure out where they sit with this. What is the right thing to do if we are, you know, trying to grant human rights to animals? What would be the thing we would do? And in, when you just think about it like that, it does seem reasonably consistent. It seems consistent. But um, when, it, when we're talking about, as I said, shooting birds out of the sky doesn't sound very practical necessarily. But um, I'm sh I have a guess that the killing the animals aside, let's just say we're intervening in a nonviolent way and we are just separating animals or just feeding animals so they don't have the need to kill and they don't kill anymore. Like I would, def I would find it very hard to, unless there was 
maybe some really, really crazy ecological knock-on effect that ended up causing more suffering and death seems reasonable, seems totally reasonable. So um, I'm sure there are places where things could be done and I'm glad this conversation is being had now because there is a lot of horrific violence happening in the wild. So why wouldn't we talk about it? Makes sense we would as vegans. Yeah, I mean, we already invest quite a bit of resources into managing ecosystems. Yeah. Um, so in a future society where we had technology to uh, engineer ecosystems, I, I don't know why it's like this weird hypothetical idea that would never happen. Um, like we already have an interest in engineering ecosystems and we do that to some degree. So mm. in a future society where we had the uh, ability to engineer, you know, totally vegan ecosystems, I, I don't know why we wouldn't do it. Yeah, it's hard to make an argument for that for sure. Um, it just seems like we're getting more control and using our power for good to reduce the things mm -hmm. that we all agree are horrible. Um, and just doing what we would want done. Like, it's one thing to say, don't intervene, you know, circle of life, lions eat zebras. But if you're the zebra, you are begging for intervention. You know, just like if yeah. it was me, I'm glad police would come and do something if someone was trying to get super violent with me. You know, we already have these systems set up in the human context. And yeah, it does seem hypocritical, does seem speciesist to not do the same thing for non-human animals. Yeah, exactly. It's a crazy conversation because like, okay, we're talking about intervention even to the point of potentially killing or maybe even eradicating species. But um, as soon as then you think about the victims who would be many more and also I believe what they deserve matters more than someone who might not know any better, but they're still violent murderers. Um, you know, when you lay it all out, like, as I said, I don't know how to argue against it. I've thought about it a fair bit and yeah, you guys seem to be making a lot of sense on this one. And it's good because it'll give people more thought on the topic and, um, you know, lead to some people. I'm not interested in necessarily working in that realm, but some people might hear, the, hear this and be like, yeah, wild animal suffering. I should do something about that. I'm, I could do this. I could do that. And plans will happen and things will happen and suffering will reduce and awesome. Great. Like we're closer to a, a more perfect world. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. All right, cool. Well, goddamn, you guys bringing that, um, that comment. Who, who started talking about that, dude? Do you know? Like, where did you first hear about it? I think it was Avi. Yeah, I think okay. Avi was the first one to bring that up. <laughs> Right on, man. And then I saw um, Humane Hancock's video, The Vegan Blind Spot. And, you know, it, it was enlightening for sure. Uh, so, so cool, bro. All right. Well, um, let me think. Oh, so in terms of... I wanted to ask you actually, man. You... You know, I, I, first of all, is there anything else regarding like the future of animal rights and the progression of this movement any other things you kind of predict or you know you see happenings happening like that like for example they went to war over slavery do you think there could be something like that when it comes to animal rights or you think that vegan um probably cell meat, not cell meat, you think cell meat will get in first you think probably not because we're detached because it's not actually us you know and that's, that's yeah that's of that's a big part of it yeah, that's enough of an attachment to be like, not want to go to war. That is fucked, actually. Yeah, I I uh, don't see like a human civil war happening mm. over something like that. Um, I It's never happened ever in history, so I, I just don't see that happening. Well, it's never happened ever in history, but there's also never been such a big push by a growing number of people to end the animal holocaust. Yeah, but um, I don't know if there's ever going to be enough people and with enough uh, motivation to actually take up arms over it. So, okay. I, it's, yeah. you think it's possible though? Because I mean, you get another thirty percent. No, not really. Oh, you just think it's impossible, really? Okay, interesting. Yeah, I don't know exactly like how all that kind of thing works, but I know there's a lot of passionate vegans out there, and if we multiply the numbers by a hundred, 
um, you know, I, maybe there would be some sort of like militia out there doing what they got to do to. Just... I could, I could see something like people blowing up slaughterhouses. Yeah, well, but, yeah, we've uh, seen stuff as far as like, that like a civil war. You yeah. know, we've seen like um, ALF kind of actions, arson, um, you know, destroying mink farms and shit like that. So, yeah. but yeah, you think it's probably a bit far to. I don't know, man. Like maybe because that's I. I feel like that's kind of speciesist of us, um, which whatever. Like we have our values, you know, and or maybe it's just that we value so many human lives more than the three trillion a year that are murdered that aren't human. But um, yeah, I don't know. It's interesting to think about because again, if we were extending human rights to animals, well, if it was humans in that situation. I don't know if we do it right now because we don't have so many numbers and we'd get fucking smoked. But in the future, who knows? Because so, that would be the logical, consistent thing to do, right? Something like that, like they did with slavery, unless there was a better alternative. But if people will not put their fucking meat down and not stop slaughtering, at some point it's like, you leave us no choice. I don't know. I'm not saying that is the move or like what will happen or what I think should happen. I'm just kind of putting a thought experiment out there. I I think if there's going to be something like that happening, it would probably just be like mass sabotage. I think mm. that'd be effective enough. Cool. Sounds fun. Let's do it. Yeah. Hell yeah. Um, all right. So uh, anything else then in, in the future? You know, that was just a specific example, but cell meat you think is going to have a massive impact. Um, you know, maybe like AI or virtual reality or anything like this, or I don't know, any any technology you'd like to see, any big study you'd like to see that you think might inspire people, any type of documentary, very specific, you think would be powerful? No, uh, not outside of anything that's going on right now. I think uh, just having more viable options that are practically identical to you know the meat people are already eating that's probably yeah. going to be the death now easiest move yeah let the least effort um for the most amount of people um any ideas if you had a million dollars to pump into the movement what you would do with that maybe you donate it maybe you'd fund something that you want to do yourself i don't know what i do hmm. i don't know what the best way to spend a million dollars for uh, animal activism would be um, if I had like a lot, a lot of money, like billions, I'd probably create a lobby group. Okay, that would be awesome. Um, and can you tell us a bit how you would work that? Like not work. Well, that, uh, the just give basically just give uh money, like be a big political donor and lobby for animal rights. So, you know, you'd agree to give, you know, like, you know, millions of dollars to somebody's political campaign mm. if they would, you know, do something to help animal rights. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Cool. Similar to how they offered the Pope a million dollars. But yeah, kind more, of. More, yeah, like, but more in the political realm of, you know, where people are making laws and things like that. I think that would be a really good way to spend some money for sure. Uh, any other ideas like that? <clears throat> no, not really. I haven't really thought of anything like that. You should, bro. I think I'd love to hear yeah. some things you could come up with, man. You know, you got a unique perspective on the whole situation, and um, we should think big. Never know when a million dollars yeah. might fall in your lap. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe create like some sort of weird, uh, like religious group, sort of like Scientology. Mm. I don't know. I've heard. Yeah, maybe I, I could do it. I had a priest hit me up one day who was like, dude, trust me, what you guys need to do is make this a religion, get the protections, get the community, all this kind of thing will aid your movement significantly. You know, have preachers. Yeah, maybe. The whole, the whole thing. Yeah, I thought that was a pretty reasonable idea, actually. Um, just something that doesn't exist that, you know, it might not be the whole story, but it would, um, you know, Bring people together, talking about veganism. Oh, bring a friend, just like Christians do with their youth groups and all that shit, and make it a fun party, dude, instead of just like very segregated vegans there, vegans over there, and there's no like, you know, um, regular sort of coming together thing that really everyone is welcome to, where there's like, let's talk about this. Here's a little bit of a video. Maybe there's some cool, I don't know, whatever, something like that. Something like that might be good for a bunch of people. Vegan Yeah. 
my wife said boom there we go we already got a name we're making progress here nice um what else do i want to ask you bro what about for your future dude you got any goals you know like let's say money was no option or, or not even to say money was no option maybe you already have some sort of um more long-term things like you are early 30s is that right yeah i'm uh, gonna be 33 in june okay so 33 in june cool so so dude like i mean i assume you don't think that the animal holocaust is ending any day now you know it's probably going to be decades at the least um do you have any sort of like longer term plan um or any goals you'd like to accomplish or dreams or you know maybe it will maybe it won't happen but just something you think that like you <coughs> you would like to yeah just add um to your contribution yeah in terms of personal goals outside of activism i would just like to live a, a happy peaceful life i've had depression my whole life and yeah I just like to overcome depression. That's the biggest one for me. Um, mm. Aside from that, in terms of vegan activism, um, you know, I would just like to keep doing what I'm doing and just grow, uh, help grow a bigger and bigger movement of based mm. vegans. Hell That's yeah. really it. Hell yeah. And you think you're already doing that the best way? You're online every day. You're reacting to all the current vegan and animal rights related events. You're answering all the questions. You're dominating the debates. You know, you're pretty much just doing it and want to do more of it. Yeah. I'm I'm interested in that uh, idea of making veganism into a religion, like ve vegantology. Mm. I'm getting some ideas from that already. <laughs> so maybe oh, that's going to be stuck. something in the future. Yeah, it's, it's definitely something to consider. Um, I think, you know, they obviously have a good model and people want community. Like, and one thing that happens when you go vegan is you lose your community because <laughs> I, I I think especially in the vegan community there's there's issues where a lot of us are kind of separated and maybe just having some sort of religion quote unquote might help yeah like a consistent event similar to like Sunday church where everyone comes there's sausages on the barbecue there's music yeah and vibes people hang out and it's just like a known thing that at the vegantology center which is a beautiful building you know people are talking about cool shit about ethics and animal rights and maybe there's someone talking about health this day and get different speakers and cool beats and everybody is welcome but the only food and drink served there is all vegan stuff and be a good way to get a lot of people's foot in the door i think yeah but just before anyone talks any shit, veganism isn't a religion. Religions have gods and our gods. Yeah. God, cows aren't our gods. We just don't want them to be murdered. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. All right. So, um, yeah. So basically just continue on and doing, doing what you're doing, bro. I think it makes sense to me. You're obviously having great success. You've been on YouTube for how long? Almost 10 years now. I really? think it might Fucking actually be 10 years. Yeah. 10 years, bro. Cool. Um, and you've moved to the live stream space in the last like two, three years, right? Yeah. Mm. What made you want to do that? Uh, just reduce workload and I just find it more, uh, more fun. Yeah. More entertaining for you. Do you, you like that you can, you know, your, your, um, fans and followers, like, I'm sure they love it. I know I like to see you engaging with people live like that it's it's not an option for them when they're just commenting on a video you posted three days ago so it's pretty it's yeah. pretty amazing technology that you know people who support you can be there um in the moment with you asking you questions and stuff it's very cool yeah um, yeah so you wanted to just um do something that you found a bit more entertaining and a bit less strenuous you know than going through all these people's videos all the times and making them and editing them and then doing it whereas now you're basically doing basically the same job but you're just doing it live and um you know you don't have to fuck around editing or nothing like that yeah yeah cool and do you feel like you are um you know like compared to your years doing this do you see your impact a lot like obviously you're having an impact because every time you do anything a seed is planted right so whether you understand whether that person went vegan from a thing you said or 10 years later after a bunch of other things happening but 
do you see uh, quite a bit of vegan gains? Thank you so much. You helped me go vegan. And um, how does it also yeah. Com- yeah, I see that all the time. Cool. And how does it also compare to previous years? Um, I, I, I've just been seeing it consistently uh, mm. since I've started. A lot of people just saying they've gone vegan because of my content. Someone said, that's awesome, bro. Someone said, Vegan Gains has great potential to stream without discussing veganism. He has other talents. Yeah, I think that's actually great. And I've seen it work in the vegan, the animal rights movement's favor because you're discussing things with dudes like Destiny, you get it on these kick or keep debate yeah. streams where you're, you're the only vegan, always fucking dominating, might I add. And you are interacting yeah. with all these people um, on a on a broad range of topics, and you always got base views, bro, and everyone sees that, and that's why you you know you win these things, and people want to see what you've got to say on topics because you are you think rationally and logically for the most part, as far as most of us see. Um, so um, you are yeah, you're reaching beyond the vegan crowd, bro, and I think that's something that probably a lot of YouTubers that are vegan have trouble with uh, because. They talk about veganism and yeah, maybe they're not as interested talking about as many other things on YouTube. So I think it's great that you've grown and um, grown what you're doing for a greater audience. It's obviously paying off well. Yeah. Yeah, I think my personality kind of helps too. Uh, A lot of vegans are kind of uh, a little too nice and passive and, Mm, you know, just having somebody who, I don't know, a little more real, maybe too real at this helps <laughs> you fucking you're honest mate and you um you you dude you're like look when i went vegan and i started doing my thing traveling around australia going giving speeches and stuff i was very very focused on reaching everybody meaning also children and i kept my speech very pg and tried to just really keep in mind that i want kids to get this message too I did that for many years you know, and now I'm at a point where I just want to be more relaxed and just, I don't want to have to think too much about how I'm going to say shit. I just want to be able to talk how I always talk with my wife all day long and everybody that's my homie. I just want to be that, you know, more myself. And, um, you know, there's like some concern over, oh, will this be good or will this be worse? You know, people will know you in a certain way. But like at the end of the day, if you want to stay sustainable, sustainable doing this talking about animal rights over and over and over and over and over and over and over again every single day for years and years and years you just need to like as you did make yourself as comfortable as possible with it you know do streaming instead of busting hours into a video and just like evolve so that you can because it's annoying man talking shit with all these idiots all the time that are defending animal abuse it's exhausting and you're seeing it and you're thinking about it and you're talking about it like you know it's not a nice topic um, so yeah, and and you've, we've all um, got our own problems as well, like you do, and everybody. I mean, I know you've got some pretty serious ones, but like, you know, we all got some our own stresses and things like that. And yeah, man, if you can um, just like be yourself, and people like it, and you get to like just be a fucking be ruthless sometimes, man. If if um, you're still helping people go vegan and get in the results you want, then that's awesome. Yeah, yeah. I I think um, a lot of activists should do that. Um, you you shouldn't be too afraid of how people are going to perceive you and try to moderate the way you talk and the way you think to kind of have a broader appeal. Um, I think if you try to appeal to everybody, you're going to appeal to nobody. So mm, just be yourself, absolutely. you know, argue the way you'd normally argue. And I think you're going to find like a stronger niche. And um, I, I think as well, you, you kind of have to, you know, think of your mental health too. Yeah. Because uh, doing all those videos, responding to fucking idiots nonstop, uh, it can like be cancer for your mind. And uh, you kind of have to think of whether or not you can do things sustainably long term and um, just doing things more that you enjoy and you can tolerate for a longer period of time, you're probably going to be in the game for longer. Because uh, sure. that's kind of what happened to Gary Yarovsky. He 
Apparently, he would argue with everybody at every opportunity, no matter where, no matter when, and he kind of got burnt out from it. So yeah, yeah, he. It's a good lesson um, seeing what happened to Yurovsky. Like he let the fucking haters get to him. You know, uh, probably a lot of things. Yeah, happened. probably got burnt out from the whole thing. But like, one thing that, and he said this. That's why I'm saying it. Don't let these people talking shit to you get to you because they got to me. Um, you know, it's it's real, bro. Like being on the internet with thousands of people commenting on you, and especially when they're vegan. So you're already like, these are my people, and it makes you question: Am I fucked? Am I doing bad shit? You know, am I am I is my something wrong with my personality? Um, but there's vegans can be anybody. So of course, there's so many disagreements amongst vegans. You know, you can have different two people that are vegan but completely different religions, two people that are vegan but completely different cultures. Um, so there's, you know, it, you can't please everybody. You, you're 100% right. And yeah, it makes the most sense to just be you, dude. Be you as much as you can. And, and that's the most sustainable thing. You don't have to put a mask on. You don't have to play any games or think as much. You can just do your thing. And, and that's enough is the point. Just get the words out of your mouth in whatever way they come out. That's, um, that's easy. That still makes sense. And you'll have an impact. So, yeah. Um cool bro cool 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 your advice i think one pe one thing that concerns people is just that what yorofsky went through and what i've been through it a lot and a lot of people go through haters and I, you've fucking had heaps you've had heaps because you are powerful dude and you know you make good points and people don't like you for it so they try to discredit you for other things so um what do you do you have any advice to people who are like I want to do activism or I want to start talking about animal rights, but I can't, I don't know how to handle all that shit. You got a lot of experience for us. So what would you say? Yeah. Um, like, uh, I, I think most people are not mentally equipped to deal with online hate and harassment. Um, I, I think I just have a mind for it. Um, and part of it's just the way I was brought up, uh, just a very hostile household, kind of used to butting heads so mm. um i i would just say you know alter the way you do activism to you know tolerate some of that so you might want to not do so much online activism if you can't really handle a lot of online hate um and you should also just learn about the moderation um types of tools that you have on these platforms like youtube you can censor out certain words or phrases so if people are telling you to kill yourself or something you can censor that out so it gets automatically blocked if that triggers you but yeah there's not just one way to do activism and i i think most people just aren't really well equipped to deal with online hate yeah it's you know you probably should be trained for that shit before people get online but we're not and you kind of learn the hard way and a lot of people don't learn and they just bounce because it, it's a lot. It's a lot unless you know how to fucking handle it. Me personally, I yeah. learned from experience, not from like studying and having a mad, like practical way of dealing with it. But I think the bottom line for me is just if you really know yourself, you know your intentions, you know you're a good person, the people around you aren't constantly telling you that you're a bad person, like your friends and family agree that you do your best and generally you make good choices and if you do do something wrong you apologize you're sorry like you try to grow and evolve and no one's perfect but you're good you know if you can just be solid in yourself and then be like okay so i've got a good foundation here whatever i'm doing is coming from me being a good person so even if i say something fucked up or something one time you know it's it doesn't make me a bad person it doesn't mean that i everything i've ever done is shit or that i should be cancelled or whatever it's just like you know people make mistakes and we're in the public eye and people looking at us and we're also put to a high standard because we're vegans you know leading an ethical revolution so we're on a higher standard than most people and um but you know you just got to like stay strong in yourself and just remember you know keep your eyes on the prize we are here not to make friends not to get a bunch of followers but to put a message out there for animal rights make it clear and concise and hopefully reach as many people as possible and um you know people will come and people will go and rumors will spread and lies will be told 
and people will believe them and people will talk shit and it won't be fair a lot of the time and it's like yeah that's how it is it can be annoying but is is it going to be the thing that makes you like upset and cry and stop being stop talking about animal rights or you're just going to be like cool thanks for helping me get thicker skin and you know i'm just going to use all this fuel to make me do more good shit and channel my frustration at all you people into me just continuing on the work and letting the results speak speak for themselves i i think another important thing is you don't need to read comments uh thanks i like i used to read all the comments and <clears throat> argue with people too much and you do not need to read comments. If you start seeing people call you idiot, dumb shit, fuck you, just stop. You mm. you don't have to read it. So yeah, yeah. Uh, a lot of people get like True. hung up on reading comments and looking at the uh, responses and shit. If you start seeing a bunch of crap that's triggering you, just stop while you're mm. ahead and uh, forget about it. Don't dwell yeah. on it. Yeah. One th one habit I got into while I was going through my suffering you know I couldn't get out there and do so much but I was always engaged in debates online in comment sections on my own on other people's on news outlets whatever wherever I saw some animal rights situation going on and fuck man the amount of energy I put into one person here one person there debating back and forth for days getting pretty much nowhere with anybody you know, it's just so unproductive to get in those comment section battles compared to doing a stream, making a video, fucking there's heaps of shit you could do that's better than that. It's like one of the worst things almost. It's not all bad, don't get me wrong. Like, you know, some of my comments have got like mad likes on it and a lot of people have been like, whoa. But um, for the most part, I don't think too much significant change is going to happen in a comment thread on Instagram. Yeah. Yeah, don't uh, over obsess about comments. They're kind of a waste of time. Yeah, yeah, cool. Um, I have a totally random question for you. Uh, would you be down to drop a rap verse on a song one day with me? Uh, sure. Yeah, when I fucking gangster shit. All right, bro. I'm gonna hold you to that. Um, cool. That could be next week or it could be in a year. I don't know, but I'll be in touch. I think it'll be sick. Yeah, sure. Okay. Hell yeah, bro. Mad. The th like, did you see when um, Paul McDonald, Paul McDonald, nah, that's a fucking homie from back in the day. Tom McDonald and uh, Shapiro did that rap. Yeah. 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 And a, a uh, top that was Tyson cringe. But the thing was that... Um, the novelty of him rapping, no one ever heard him rap before. Everybody is just like, oh, I'll watch that just for the novelty of who's this guy. And, um, you know, when it comes to music, like, this is my future goals. This is something I've been working on the last couple of years as well. Is, you know, animal rights has so much language, has so much of our like internal uh, vocabulary regarding veganism and animal rights. So many rhymes to rhyme that haven't been done yet and um, so many lyrics and it's so powerful and it's I just it's I found it the best way to express how I really want to say shit um, and it's fun and interesting and when it's got a beat people are gonna listen to it and you know like nod their head and listen to this shit so I'm onto it bro and I think it's gonna be sick but then on top of that you get a random collab with somebody like you no one ever heard you rap before and then you know that I just feel like it's a massive way to um, just like what they did, dude. They they blew it up because of the novelty and get a get a novelty rap with you and get a random one. Like I don't know if I should mention names, but I got a couple of people who you would never expect would do a rap that are down to do um, some animal rights raps with me. So I think that's gonna be cool, bro. To like bring people together, to bring audiences together and share audiences, and also um, you know hear hear people drop a rhyme for the first time, which is going to be cool. And um, just get a new like wave of activism happening. I think it's going to be big. Yeah, that sounds cool. Sweet, bro. Well, I'm glad I asked and I'm glad you accepted the invitation. Um, 
anything else, bro? Is there anything else you want to discuss or you feel would be good to um, actually just before you before you do, if you have anything? Lee Richardson donated five pounds. Thanks so much, Lee. And they said, Vegan Gains, call out Jake Paul for a fight. Get that bag because you'll easy win and then start Vegantology. <laughs> Fuck, there we go. We've got a um, method. I think I could beat him, but I, I don't think he'd agree to it. I'm not a big enough name. Uh, he All also right. only fights old people, so. Yeah, true, true. Pro you're probably quite a bit taller than him too, I assume. I think he's like... Uh, uh, I don't know how tall he is. I'm 6'3". Six six, okay, Jake? I think if I remember correctly, I, I saw it recently. I think he's 6'2". Okay. Um, who knows, bro? Who knows what will happen? You know, you might blow up. You might fucking... Oh, actually, um, somebody, uh, talked to Logan Paul in person. Uh, one of my, I think one of my viewers. Yeah. And he said, why don't you fight vegan gains? And then, uh, he laughed <laughs> and he, he said, oh yeah, I know vegan gains. No so, shit. Uh, one of that's... the Paul brothers was asked about that. That's hilarious, bro. Yeah. Nice. Okay. So we've already got a foot in the door. Yeah. They should get you on Impulsive. I could actually maybe make that happen. I've been on their podcast a while back. Oh, yeah? But yeah, I know, I know a dude um, who might be able to make that happen. I think, I think hmm, that's the project. I'll work on that for you, dude. That'd be sick. That would be sick. Yeah. Um, I'll remember. I will need to write that down. But hit me up on that soon. I'll message a dude as soon as we're done here. All right. But that would be epic, bro. You would fucking dominate. I was too nice, bro. Like, I was. I, and I wanted to be, you know, it was at a time where I just felt like what veganism needed was a, a nice, friendly face because it had such a bad rap. And I think there's a lot of nice, friendly vegans out there. It's sort of that, uh, that, what's the fucking word? Like, stereotype is a lot less these days. Um, because so many more people are vegan and a lot of them aren't like vocal activists, hardcore activists. So um, I think that job is kind of done. But to get you on there and to, you know, run your arguments and things like that, I think would be, I would be fucking loving to see that. And if I could make that happen, yeah. I'll be patting on myself on the back for a long time. All right, so that'd be cool. Um. Then, bro, is there anything else you want to mention to to the people? You know, anything else on your mind lately? Uh, anything else you feel like sharing? Uh, not really. Not that I can think of. Cool, man. Well, um, oh, I just got one more little thing for you. So, you know, I plan to be doing more streams. And um, I just wondered if you got any, like, tips from experience, you know, that maybe I haven't already read or seen the YouTube video on. Yeah, um, you should use uh, Streamlabs for the donors. Yeah. <clears throat> um, for YouTube what, takes, I think, it's thirty percent Streamlabs. Oh, oh, for for donors, you said. Yeah, YouTube takes like a thirty percent cut with Streamlabs. You keep everything, so it's better to use Streamlabs. Oh, and uh, you can have um, you can have notifications too. So people who like donate enough money, like you know, three five dollars, you can set it at whatever you want. It'll read mm -hmm. it out automatically. I've seen that. I was wondering how you did that. So that was a Streamlabs move. Bro, I appreciate it. I'll probably take that on and um, and figure out how to make that all work. So wicked, dude. Well, in that case then, I think we're done. And I just want to thank you so much for your time and sharing your knowledge and um, just doing a mad job, dude, at getting the vegan message out there. You're one of the biggest YouTube vegan YouTubers ever, both in amount of followers and also mass you doing a good job Thanks. man a really really good job and um i've learned so much from you i'm very grateful for all the content you put out there it's helped me evolve it's helped a lot of people evolve helped evolve the movement so fantastic efforts brother i hope you are very proud of yourself and onwards and upwards bro i look forward to seeing everything else that you got coming for us yeah for sure wicked man all right well i'm not gonna stick around on the chat or nothing so i'm just gonna end the stream and you said you are gonna stream later right dude yeah yeah in like 30 minutes an hour something like that gotta eat hour. first okay easy so yeah then in that case thanks for your time brother it was great to chat with you yeah no problem and thanks everybody for joining us and for all your comments for the donations the questions everything like that uh, you're all legends. We appreciate it. And we'll see you next stream. Cool. Cheers, brother. See ya.
Boom. We done. All right. Cool. Thanks, man. Thanks very much. Um, okay. Now, here's something I want to mention to you. I hope you don't mind. I don't want to upset you or nothing, but you kind of, I wasn't going to mention it, but then you sort of brought it up. Um, so Is it still I, streaming? Uh-uh. Should Are you be. sure? I think it's still streaming. 